Two jazz hands. Come on, jazz hands. Or something, you know. Jazz hands. Can I can I do a shout out to Texans? It's a long one. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You know. Absolutely. We are live. Put on your big girl panties. <laughs> we are live with the Who Moves My Freedom podcast. I'm Hank Strange, and we are live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. Check it out Thank right you. there. Live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios tonight. We have a very special guest. Not this me. handsome man right here. Look at that hunk of handsomeness. That is Wynn Atterbury. Am I pronouncing? Is it Atterbury? I don't know if Wynn. Wynn, can you hear me? Earth to win. Earth to uh -oh, win. Uh-oh. Do we lose him? Yeah. Where's your audio? Uh, <laughs> a lot of feedback. Oh, yeah. Someone um, getting feedback from somewhere. I don't know. You've got I headsets can, on. I can hear you. There's, there's a lot of feedback. Oh, you know what? Because you probably, if you go to that window with YouTube, you have to mute that YouTube. Yeah, turn the volume off. Yeah, that, so that's probably what you're hearing. Or just just there close out. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so I, I, right, so <laughs> I was announcing you. <laughs> this is, this is, Thank this you. Is, this is how it goes when we do it live. <laughs> yeah. So I was wow. announcing you. It, you're, so your mm -hmm. last name is Atterbury, right? Am I pronouncing yes. it properly? Yes. Yep. Okay, and you're from WMD Guns. Glad to be here. Thank Absolutely. You, and uh, I think you guys do, you, you make guns and all that stuff, but you're also uh, big finishing and coating guys, right? Yeah, we started out as a performance coating company and a, a performance coated products company. So we do both. We coat for OEMs, individuals, uh, builders, dealers, gunsmiths, but we also had to get out on the market with our own coated products and show people um, the benefits of the, the new age and the performance coatings over the century old phosphate and chrome uh, awesome. type coatings. So. Right, awesome. And you're a Florida company. I love that. You're in Stewart, Florida. Yes, sir. So that's awesome. I always like, since I'm a Floridian myself, Walter's a Floridian. Yes, I love to support the Florida businesses. The homies. Okay. Yeah, the homies. <laughs> always happy homies, to see yeah. that. And uh, speaking of Walter Keller, there he yes, goes. Sir. Look Here at we, that. Here we yeah. are. This Again. is the world's sexiest man oh, God. right there. <laughs> I was Walter, thinking the same thing when I saw Walter. Walter. Yeah. Oh, oh Walter, dear. Sexy pants. <laughs> <laughs> Better be careful. Of Safety Harbor Firearms. What's yes. going on, Walter? How, how's your day been today, man? Okay. All right. All right. How's your Thursday? Good? Okay. Yeah, we okay. It was good. We came up with that, what I told you earlier today, a new idea for something. So. Oh, you did? Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Looks like Lola just got here. Don't oh, take my water bottle away. Oh, look. Check that out. Look at that water bottle. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's, oh. You know, um, I got someone actually made this nice. I, I put my I put it on weird. That's why it looks like Does that. I got a question. Does WMD own a laser? Uh, we don't. I have a laser within stone's throw. Oh, OK. So You're lucky. Uh, yeah. So they, yeah. 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 I've been, I've been I've been thinking about I've been wanting to get one. That's why I, I've been asking. That's why. Oh, OK, cool. Now, um, by the way, if anyone wants to get one of these stickers, my friend Sam makes these stickers, and she's on Instagram. So I'm just going to give a quick shout out that's for a, her. That's a sticker. Yeah, that's a sticker. You can get it. You can put the Hank Strange logo on your various materials. This one is like a metallic sticker. That's why it's yeah, like that's, so why, that's why I brought the laser idea. Yeah, they, they, so, laser, they do those like that with the laser too. So yeah. So if you're interested in this, it's a damn good decal. So D as in dog, G as in Gary, decals, DG decals on Instagram. So go like DG decals, and then you could talk to Sam and tell her you want the Hank Strange logo if anyone wants to put it on their stuff. So like two people will probably go over there. And hey, Hank, an idea that uh, if you do the reverse of that, uh -huh. then you can bead blast that cup or any cup. Oh. And then you get a bead blasted version of it. You don't have to worry about painting it or... Anything oh, like that? Yeah, that's a pretty good idea, man. Because I'm pretty rough with this already. I've already put dents in this. This is my first oh, Yeti. Yeah. I'm I'm now officially a Yeti fan. These things are awesome. <laughs> They're great, aren't they? <laughs> I saw all these dudes, including Walter, always with his Yeti stuff. Maybe yeah. You know, yeah. So, so now I'm all into Yeti. I'm all about that now. Yeah, you, you know. fell for it. <laughs> it's good, man. It works. No, I still no, have that's like this morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, I've this I've had this walking around with all day. Listen to that. 
this ice up in there. It's nice and cool. That's your rock. So there you go. All right. So, you know, this is we're going to be talking uh, gun coatings, finishings, all that kind of stuff, different products that WMD makes. They, they make lots of cool stuff. We're going to we're going to have like some gun porn. We're going to show some guns. Right, Wynn? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Wynn's got um, lots of guns. I even have stuff because Big Daddy Guns does carry WMD guns for anyone in like Gainesville. Check, look at this AK. This is a brand new AK from uh, Century Arms. I think this is the RAS 47, right, Win? Yes. So, but um, it's WMD out. So it has this like uh, distressed, awesome look to it. That, really, that's really the nickel nice. boron. Uh, we were doing a new look for them, and we distressed the wood at, along with nickel boron coating everything. And then doing a distressed look, we call it a survivor look or a battle worn. Uh, yeah. What other people. That looks Sarah really goes. good and it feels really good, man. It's really nice. So there you go. I think it's a great finish. So we're going to show it. We're going to have all kinds of gun porn like that. You know, we've got some other guns. Wynn's got some stuff. Walter has some things. Um, I want to start by reminding everyone we got a bunch of stuff, a bunch of people that are in the chat. So I want to say what's up to everyone in the chat. Yeah, we got lots of people in the chat. So let's see who was here first. Lawrence Lerwick yep, he was, was in the chat first. What's up, Lawrence? Uh, Joe Carpenter in the chat also. I'm just going to scroll through. Boost. Yeah, if I miss you, Mark Wagner, Chris B, uh, DC Mega Boost, like you said. See him in the chat. Uh, shut Angle. up and play your guitar. <laughs> the, uh, people have some really cool names that, that come on here when just so you know 904 outdoors our friend Steve 904 uh, yeah Saint Sinning sword um, he's a that's someone new I see here Mike Bryant highway run 77 Michael Smith uh, I, I think as we said DC2 mega boost GA driller Chris Bullis <laughs> Dead Enders. I could just go on and on. If I miss you, um, Tango Hunter. So if I missed you, feel just, bad. yeah, just leave a comment in here and tell me roll call and I will mention your name. And I want to take this time to remind everyone that's watching and you guys that are here on the show with me, um, make sure you click that thumbs up button. We really need that. That's how we let everyone know that we're having this big party over here. And we call them all in. So make sure you click that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed to the Hank Strange situation, make sure you do that. And there is a bell that you need to turn on so you get notified when we do this and, and uh, you get your invite to the party. As well as make sure that you share this video with your friends and family on social media, all that good stuff, whatever you have. We appreciate it. So, yep, and I want to I send like a huge, massive shout out. So everyone out there that sponsor us, sponsors us on Patreon, we are Patreon slash Hank Strange. Lola's in the building. Finally, she has bought me some kind of drink from Panera Bread that I will sip. Looks like it's some kind of mango thing. So I will sip that once I get a chance. Okay, so there's, there's a bunch of stuff going on. There's a bunch of news. Um, when did you have anything, was there anything going on in the news that caught your interest, When? It just, and it doesn't even have to be gun stuff, man. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, it can be just completely. Um, yeah, whatever. anything that you know. Well, I liked. I liked what uh, we heard today in uh, in China. The China Bank Central Bank ordering their other banks not to do business with uh, North Korea. Oh, really? Um, yeah, love that. That was kind of a new thing at lunchtime the, today. Yeah. So I thought that was uh, a surprise you, on their end. Do you believe the Chinese? Well, they <laughs> they said it. It's whether they do it or not, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, they are definitely playing the game. Have they ever done that before? I don't think so, right? I, I've not I've not heard of them. No, they ever have. have though. And, yeah. um, I think I think the China I think the Chinese are taking um, Trump seriously about that it'll fl it'll destroy the place. So, um, <laughs> well, I, I think I mean because didn't didn't um, didn't North Korea come out and have some other stuff to say today as well? Uh, well, the president signed an executive order that said we're going to crack down. He gave uh, authority to the um, uh, to the Treasury to crack down on people that are doing business with North Korea. So that's the first time that's ever happened. So that might have caught China's eye, too, that we're, we're going to stop doing business with people. And, Can't. you know, he basically said do business with us or them and you, you can make a choice. Yeah. yeah. Kim Jong calls Trump deranged, vows he will pay dearly. 
over yeah. here. So the, the <laughs> war of words is heating up. And I think it's getting to a point where maybe like China's feeling, hey, something could go down. And here's the thing, man. I think how much do we consume that China produces? Like a third of what, or, or more than that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here in America, we consume yeah, a lot we of have, stuff. That comes from all China. we have to do is chi turn China off, and their economy is going to go. Yeah, there will be revolutions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a lot of people to feed in the cities that they can't. Yeah, hardly do it right now. So at the same time, I don't think we're going to do that because dudes want their their um, iPhone X. <laughs> They'll survive without that. Yeah. yeah. So I don't mm -hmm. think that the people in America are actually going to go out there and not. Uh, you know, I think it'll be. I don't think it'll be a bad thing. You know, I'm sure we can make these smartphones and all that kind of stuff here. We probably have to sort out some stuff in America first, though. I think you know, because we because in America we want like we all want stuff and we all want it to be. I'm not going to say cheap, affordable. No, they and want it cheap. <laughs> they want it cheap. Don't, don't beat around the bush. They want it cheap, and they want it now. Uh, high quality, yeah. inexpensive. <laughs> there now. you go. Yeah, I want maximum quality, minimum cost. Yeah. Now. I don't know how you're going to magically do it. Uh, just pretend that, it's, that no one in China is doing this. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. Yeah, that is interesting that China's doing that. I mean, I don't know if it's going to have any effect. Um, oh, wow. I think, uh, I think North Korea is emboldened by the fact that the Winter Games are going to be in South Korea. So, you know, that. they don't really think anything's going to happen, right? <laughs> they, you don't want the Winter Games going off and there's like bombs dropping right across the border. Uh, <laughs> no? The world, the world will get along if the Winter Games don't happen. Yeah. Uh, ask, ask the Russians in 1980. When we'll nobody to, nobody came to their Olympics, we'll have to resolve it before then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It. it's it's yeah. something will happen before then. I think before we get to that, so we got a few yeah. months going on. So yeah, there's a there's a bunch of different news things you guys can, uh, you know, I'll give you guys the the uh, the people that are listening, watching, and all that kind of stuff a chance to come up with your questions and or things that are going on in in the news that you want to talk about. I know Walter, you were mentioning what happened at Gemtech. Yeah, Gemtech, uh, I guess they fired the CEO. Yes. Or, well, Gemtech uh, didn't fire them, right? Didn't uh, Smith & Wesson buy well, Gemtech? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Smith & Wesson runs the show now. I guess rumor is he didn't get along with some of the new uh, Smith & Wesson folks, maybe? Yeah. Um, but I think that's kind of what goes down if you're if another company uh, takes you over, right? That's expected, actually. Yeah. I, I would have had my bags already packed, so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if, you, if you take the Freedom Group as any example, where they, they <laughs> <laughs> swallow yeah. up Bushmaster and, and DPMS yeah. and other companies, so I mean, you really don't need ten different CEOs. Yeah, I mean, yeah. How many CEOs do you need? <laughs> you know, with ten different benefit packages and ten different this and ten different that, you don't. So, don't need are these suppressors? Um, are they already making suppressors through Smith and Wesson? Well, Gemtech probably has never stopped making. Yeah. Suppressors. So yeah, but eventually the the suppressors are going to be branded as Smith and Wesson, or they're still going to be Gemtech. Know, What's going on there? If they were smart, they'd keep it Gemtech. Yeah. And, yeah. And then Smith and Wesson could have their own brand. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, this whole I don't know what Win thinks about this, but this whole thing that happened with uh, people thinking suppressors are going to come off the NFA has really kind of like thrown a monkey wrench in that business. Yeah, you know, we I, I spent um, about a week in Washington D.C. Um, we we made our own suppressors this year. I'll show you one a little later. Oh, cool! And uh, so as a result, I had to go learn all the the rules and and talk to the folks at ATF. And they said, um, you know, there's um, there is the Hearing Protection Act that's there. It's in it's in in the committee. It's not out. They said when it gets out, it may take a year to year and a half to two years. Uh, they were actually for it. Um, all the executives and the staff members there said all the protection you need from a suppressor is included in the National Firearms Act. You don't need it to be or the Gun Control Act, right? So okay. it, the penalty is a mandatory 30 years if you use a suppressor in any kind of criminal activity. Mm -hmm. So they, they said that's fine. Our job is to protect um, the, the people. That's okay. all. That's all the ATF was, is there for, mm -hmm. and we we thought, or they thought that 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 had all the protection needed. That you didn't have to put it in the NFA, uh, the Gun Control Act covered that, 
and and then they cited different things like the only person that's been um, prosecuted for that was a guy that made a suppressor out of a, a coke bottle or something you know with tissue mm -hmm. paper and so it was a ridiculous thing right and and they they were they were all about changing the rule and they were for the law they said don't get excited that it's going to happen you know three months from now uh it is going to take some time but um they thought it was a good thing and uh everybody there thought it was a good thing but it did create a huge backlog when they changed the rule about the trust to uh b back in july of last year i think the, the the wait time went to nine months to a year and they said they were almost um through that backlog and they'd get the the wait time down to three to you know hopefully three months but we'll yeah. we'll, we'll see yeah, yeah that was a tough thing because now if you're in a trust every single person in the trust has to submit the paperwork and all that, right? Right. Um, yep. I think there's photos and is there photos and fingerprints involved in that every time you do it now? Yeah, um, I, are you I, nodding I, yes, Walter? Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and one of the and, problems is how do you know who's in the trust? Who's going to well, be in the trust whoa, 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 whoa. From, from all that time, you know? Yeah. yeah, but you know, if you put Uncle Joe on the trust and he's a felon, you know, and that happens, trust yeah. me, that, that's out there and that's why they right. did this. I can't believe it went that long without them doing it. Yeah. Um, what's What's more important than that is they did away with the with the law enforcement sign off. Okay, so we we got important. something, that's but lost important. something. That's more important than all that because now you don't have to go to your sheriff and beg, and now you don't even have to have a trust. Yeah, so that's true. So but if you already have a trust, if you already have a trust, everyone that's in there, I know in right, my trust right. is just me and Lola at this point. So yeah, when you get something else, you'll have mm -hmm. to have. Uncle Joe will have to do his, his sign off, yeah. his card and his photograph. And it's not yeah. that big of a deal, really. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, in, in the in the scheme of paperwork, it's not that big of a deal. You can do it all yourself too, which a lot of people think you can't. You can do it all. Yeah, you know what I think would be good and I you know the thing is you have to find a place where you could do the fingerprints in the You can do the, your own fingerprints. Oh, you could just you do can your do own. You do it all yourself. You don't have to have the sheriff do your fingerprints. You know, you don't have to have a DWI to get your fingerprints done. <laughs> No. Oh, no, I didn't know that. I thought you had to go to specific no, you can places. Do it all. And... As long as it's legible, you can do it all. Okay. You know what I think would be a good idea if there were stores like gun stores set up to do it where people can come in there and, you know, and just make it. Because a lot of times people get intimidated by the whole idea of paperwork, right? Right. Yeah. You know, well, the gun store could then have a notary because notaries would have uh, fingerprints too. So, yeah. yeah that's yeah. good. Yeah. I think yeah. it would be cool. I'm not saying every gun store should do that, but maybe some bigger gun stores in areas. It would be a good way to get people to come into your store. Yeah, it could be a hook. Yeah, let's <laughs> shop around. Have the have the uh, wherewithal to take the passport photos that have to go with that, and do the fingerprint. Maybe have the forms, and you know, then people can do, do everything, send their paperwork out there. You know, so the uh, silencer shop. Uh, out of Austin, Texas, uh, has terminals in different dealer stores that you can yeah, do your fingerprints paper, okay. like that. Um, there's a whole setup that the dealer has to go through to get that. But yeah. yeah, I think uh, Diamond Moto is saying that that um, that he's heard. He says he I've heard the kiosk is cool. It's not. Um, Michael Smith says uh, Silencer Co has the kiosk. It's not actually Silencer Co. It's Silencer Shop. That's Correct. Know, shop. Yeah, I always mix them up. So yeah. Yeah. Um, well, their they're business is silencers, so they got to do something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I always I mean, mix as, as, a, a, as a regular, you know, silencer co. A lot of people ask silencer co about that. Yeah. yeah. And think that that thing is silencer co. So it happens. Well, that's a branding thing. They need to work on it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, um, there's probably some litigation going on behind the scenes right now. <laughs> the, the, the other knows? big, the other big thing was the thing that Gem Tech and I think the silencer shop and the other, the other three that got together and came up with the barcode system for the paperwork. Yeah. That's a, that's a big deal, the speed has, the paperwork. Uh, has anyone used that yet? Because I haven't used no, that. I, I, I haven't used that. that. Interesting. Yeah. It sounds like not, it would be easy, but not, not that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Yeah, that's not just for suppressors, though. That's for anything, any Form 4, mm -hmm. I think. So, yeah. It'll, it'll speed it up because the main thing it takes time at ATF, I guess, is doing data entry and, and the mistakes and the, you know, misspelled yeah. words and all that so right yeah you have to be careful with that stuff so yeah that's um you know that's some I, you know what the whole gem tech um smith and wesson thing here's what i think you know before all of this happened like one of the things i think that 
I, I'm tr I want to see different things in guns, right? I don't really see an evolution. Like everyone's just making the same AR-15. I would like to see some kind of evolution, some kind of movement forward here. One of the things I think is interesting is the intricately suppressed barrel. I drive Walter crazy with this. When do you see him shaking his head right now? <laughs> There's yeah. nothing new about that, Hank. That is that's yeah, yeah it's neat. Ancient, it's ancient technology. It's ancient. Ancient. Well, so then why don't we have it everywhere? Because well, how well, hard is it to get a can? Well, see, there you go. So that's the thing. Like yeah, if that it's, was, you, it's nothing new about it. I mean, yeah, I think you know. we should make that easier. You know, I really do think that uh, it's a herring issue. I'm not just saying that so we can get suppressors easily. We're all damaging our. I know, like I've got, you know, I've got tinnitus for sure. <laughs> Well, I guess it becomes e easier if the Hearing Protection Act does pass and it goes back to, you know, that's unre unregulated. But my so question you, is, you, you, see up, more, you, you uh, mentioned ATF saying this, you know, the National Firearms Act covers that. Well, where have they been since 1968? Oh, it's all politics. What, what, it's I mean, all uh, politics. And, yeah. and they yeah. think it's a James Bond thing that criminals are out there running around with silencers. Well, yeah. And, and, you and know, if you shoot a, that, if you shoot an AR-15, it's, it's like but, as quiet as a 22. But once again, they yeah. quoted they quoted facts about that. And there's been there's hardly any crimes committed that we know of. Yeah. Um, so they couldn't cite a single one except that right, one right. I mentioned. So yeah. once again, where they where they been all these years? Now all of a sudden it's like a light came on. <laughs> like, <I> yeah. <laughs> well, I think the thing is, you know, there's really, you know, what's happened all these years? The two political parties that we have, that two political party system, is messing us up, and they're not really doing anything. You know, Democrats definitely don't want to do anything yeah, in that. Here, here the, in here that the funny regards. part about that is the light came on when Obama was still in office. So tell me that. I'm I'm not following that one either. I just don't get it. You know? Yeah, it's but like, it, there's still resistance. I mean, it's oh, not, there's always going to be going anywhere fast. Well, <laughs> and no, no, and it's not just resistance from the left. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I mean, well, you know, Republicans have a bully. They can do whatever they want right now, but they're not a, doing anything about it. It's misinformation, is all it is. I mean, you know. yeah. I think this I is. Know. I think we have like a very small window to actually do something about this because you have to get it to become a law, and then it has to fall on the desk of someone that will actually sign it. You know what I mean? So you have to get that funny that funny thing to happen, which obviously under the previous administration that would not happen. No, he'd right. never sign anything like that because yes. oh, no. he, oh, he is yeah. scared of his shadow. Yeah, so, and so now our chance is here. I, I think I agree with Wynn. I've heard from people that it's not going to happen this year, but probably next year. You congressional know, election. Yeah, that they will get together because they have to realize, like, if if we get another presidential election and you don't get Trump back, you know, and and then not only do you not get Trump back or a Republican, you get a Democrat in there, then it's not happening anytime soon. So there's a very short time of, you know, window for people to actually do something about it. And maybe that's why you see some of these companies like Smith & Wesson taking the opportunity to consolidate the industry because they're thinking more long term, right? No, they're they're thinking it's going to happen. That's why they're doing it. They're yes, not doing it. They're not they're doing it. If they didn't think it was going to happen, they wouldn't be spending the money. It takes a lot of money to do what they're doing. So Right. But what I'm yeah. saying to you is they're not thinking it's going to happen tomorrow. They're not worried no, about No, no, they're not worried about tomorrow. Yeah. Well, there Nothing. were a lot of there were a lot of people that did think it was going to happen. When you oh, walked there. around the SHOT Show last year, there was three-fold suppressor companies out there, some mom-and-pop guys that are all of a sudden suppressor makers yeah. because they thought the law was going to pass immediately. And <laughs> Look at AR-15 manufacturers. It, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and then the market goes to hell, so a lot of them go away. You know. Yeah. So, well, a lot of these suppressor guys won't make it either if that's all they're doing. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, I, yeah, there's a couple of things that have to happen in the industry. Even the big ones might not make it if they're not, if that's all they're doing. Yeah. But, you know, like it's hard to be. A, <laughs> yeah. Have you seen lately that there are upticks in the stock market and stuff like that for for firearms companies that are trading on the stock market? So there's some indications, at least from the analysts and stuff like that, that there's going to be easing on restrictions. Right. We've been talking about that. I think there was uh, there, there's going to be easing on restrictions of selling overseas. Well, that's what I hear. Um, yeah. uh, once again, to that, the thing that came out of committee was the part about the importation of firearms, which I thought was even, my personal opinion, is more important than the suppressor part. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Because you know you can't you can't bring the fun guns in, you, you know. Yeah, I, I found it pretty interesting to go into a manufacturer's plant, and there's a piece of their plant that isn't part of America. 
So you have the <laughs> ATF agents trying to get in the cage and the people inside the cage saying you can't come in. Really? Isn't part of yeah, America. because that's 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 a ground where they're importing the guns and the guns oh. haven't been brought in yet. Oh, so there's a firewall right there. There's a cage. There's an actual cage there. It's where um, they what they can't be investigated. Right? I'm oh, to think really? How, so, yeah. and where did you see this? I've never heard of at, it. At one of the manufacturing plants. It's locked up. It's a it, it's a customs thing. Yes, oh. actually, absolutely, it's a customs thing. Right. And it, right, right, right. I, I so just, that zone is not America. That. So that zone, right? Exactly. No, just, uh, there's a word for it. I can't think of it right now, but it's uh, it, it's awful. It's it's. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of it too when you bring yeah. it in. So it's, if it's, I if I'm on the run from the popo, no, that's not for you. Plant, and then I no. step into the zone. No. They cannot arrest <laughs> me in the zone. No. Go to no, the Catholic but, Church first. <laughs> More of what happens is if an ATF is doing a, a, a check on your logbooks, they can't audit. go in there. Yeah, they there. can't audit what's inside the wow. foreign cage. Because it's not officially in the country yet. Exactly. That I thought that was fascinating. When yeah, that is fascinating. Back, you know? <laughs> That's almost but, like, you but, it's, what, uh -huh. but it's got to stay locked up in the cage. See, it don't. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's still yeah, traceability. Because yeah. as soon as it comes out of the cage and you're not, it's not official. You go to jail. Yeah. When? Don't tell anyone about this, but Walter believes in stargates, and that sounds like a stargate. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. proof of stargate existence to Walter. <laughs> but to Walter, Walter is going to look this up. <laughs> I brought it. I brought it up one time because Saddam Hussein. They say Saddam Hussein had a stargate. That's why we invaded Iraq. And uh, now, now I'm now I'm Captain Stargate. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, to, to Walter's point on the on the importation, though, um, it it would ease that because the reason they do that is because they have to tear down those imports. Right. It has to be forty percent. Uh, is it forty percent Walter or sixty percent American made? So oh, they have to yeah. strip down all the foreign guns and then put American the, parts on it. The nine the nine twenty two R stuff. Yes. Yeah. So, right. So. Like Century Arms, they bring those AKs in, and they don't have the magwell. Well, once they start making their modifications, they got to get those parts into those guns before they're legal. Right. So, um, yeah. Uh, so th that the, would the, ease that to where you you could just bring them in and import them and sell them. Yeah. Right. So right. Chris Bullock but says also, uh, those also are that ghost was, guns. When they're in the cage, they're ghost guns. That was part That's the Phantom Zone. <laughs> I think I think the, I think the wording on that bill was if a gun if a firearm is legal here now. You can't stop its importation. So say the AK is legal here from American made AK is legal or any AK is legal. You can't stop them a lot from coming in. Okay. They, or you can't stop the, some of these other, you know, every time they ban something when they get a women like a Sago or Malad or maybe the Chinese guns. So I think that's what that was about. Actually. Okay. Okay. Um, to cool. get, get rid of this import garbage that's keep constantly changing and, you know, yeah. All right, so you know what? Let's do this. I think everyone's here in the building. You know, um, we, we're we've, we're going to come back and do some more news stuff. I think we should dig in right now. We've got everyone here. I'm going to remind everyone to click the thumbs up button. Make sure you thumbs up this video and then share it on social media with your friends and family. So you know what? Let's get Win to tell us. Uh, you know what is WMD what guns? How did you guys? Uh, you bonded know, warehouse. It's called the bonded warehouse. Oh, bonded warehouse. Yeah, they ah. said it in the chat. That's what I was trying to think of. It's a bonded okay. warehouse. Yeah, bonded. thank you. Yeah, Sorry yeah. about that. Those yeah. dudes in the chat, man, they're just geniuses. <laughs> yeah. It was right on the like a, my tongue the like whole a time. Special, I, special kind of genius. I couldn't get it out. It was like it's a, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, when tell us about WMD guns. What does the name signify? I know it. it everyone knows weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the W of WMD guns. I have a partner, Mike, and a par partner, Duke. So the initials just kind of rolled into a nice. Uh, that was convenient, man. That's nice almost like a rock band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we started in 2011. Um, I'd been working with uh, coatings. I came out of the Department of Defense after 18 years, and I, I've been working with the nickel boron coating since 2003. And we were working specifically with the government after Jessica Lynch, um, her convoy got got ambushed and she got kidnapped. And the story went that she was reaching for four or five of her M16s and they were all jammed. Wow. You know, everybody else that, she, you know, anything within arm's reach and she was trying to get to it. And they were jammed because we were fighting in that moon dust um, that we hadn't really fought before. So the dust was was uh, coagulating with the with the oil in the in the firearm. Okay. And I was sitting 
by the inventor of nickel boron who had this uh, in aerospace um, in F-100 engines since the 60s. And he said he thought he could replace the oil, the phosphate, the chrome, and all the coatings on the gun and the oil with one coating. Um, so we took that to the to the powers to be and they said bullshit you know that's our job uh, <laughs> if it could be done we would have done they it. said those exact words right uh, okay. pretty much and kick yeah. you out of the room so uh, uh, go third, it was about three months later went back um, the inventor worked with Mike Rock of uh, Rock Creek Barrels who's a PhD metallurgist and a, a barrel maker and a gun guy and um, they came out with the first loop free AR-15 they fully coated it with nickel boron, had shot 30,000 rounds through it. It's still up in the museum uh, piece and took it back. And there was a guy at SOCOM that thought, that's an interesting technology. I want to I want to see it. And that's how some government contracts got started. And we coated M4s, M249s, M240s. And in 2011, we started WMD guns to commercialize this and get it into uh, consumers hands again we're we're trying to optimize the shooting experience less cleaning easier cleaning longer shooting without stopping higher reliability um, you know there's there's two two groups some people like to sit out on the porch and get away from everybody and clean their guns and the other people don't clean their guns and want to still go have fun shooting right and so with with the different performance coatings um, we thought we could really make an impact, um, not just change a sight or change a, 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 a trigger or change something on the AR. So we came out with our bolt carrier group, which would drop into any AR and you could run it lube free, but critically you, you're able to pull it out and clean it up easy, uh, run longer, spend all day at the range and then go home and just, you know, yeah. my, my so range pants are black. Can't. You know. So that doesn't mean you can't put some lube on there, but it's not a, like an absolute necessity. Right. Or put yeah. it on and burn it off, shoot until it's gone. Yeah. Um, I, I like to put a little lube on and then wipe it off because the, the microstructure, the coating will retain the, the oil, but it'll still feel dry to touch. Mm -hmm. And so it won't stick. So I've got all sorts of uh, third party tests where they they shove sand in the operating group and then they can shake the gun off because it's not sticking to anything and you can go shoot. Cool. Um, so yeah. that that's that's critical. So f starting with the bolt carrier group, then we we were coating all parts of the gun, and so we came up with, you know, a nickel boron gun, the world's first uh, all nickel boron gun. There's a so we do the upper receiver, the lower receiver. All of our guns start with match grade barrels. And the other thing, Hank, we did um, when we started out is we didn't want to just be a one one coating company. We're not just selling nickel boron because it's the only coating we sell. We have diamond like carbon coatings, PVDs, titanium nitrides, melanite. And so we, we try to work with people to put the best coating on the on the part that'll give it the best performance. So okay. our barrels are nitrided, for example. Okay. Um, and you and do that. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, so no, I, just, I just wanted to know. So you do these coatings uh, for the firearms industry, for manufacturers? Or, or you do it for manufacturers and the uh, general public? Uh, we do it for both. Um, that's part of that, that vision of bringing advanced technology to the consumer. You get it to the consumer through having LWRC provide nickel boron, having spikes do nickel boron. So we coat for OEMs and manufacturers, but we also accept consumer parts so that their 1911 can get coated. Cool. Or, or yeah. their, their AR can look like yeah, 1911 is uh, definitely needed just to start some trouble from yesterday. Oh, gosh, yesterday. don't start that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, a great well, story. I had a 1911 championship shooter. She was a, a Olympian, and she was pounding the, the table at my SHOT Show booth and saying, you cannot run a 1911 dry. When? You can't do it. And I gave her the gun. I said, here, go shoot it. 3,000 mm -hmm. rounds later, she had some LE officers shoot with her uh, an air force guy shoot with her out in, in colorado she sent me her gun in to get coated and said here can you coat my my competition 1911 yeah i think no, that's i think no the 
no no failures it was all great so yeah i think the technology is there we need to use it man i think we we've got a lots of technology that we can use to improve these things you know um anywhere from little changes all the way up to big changes that we can make when we're doing this stuff now i think walter had a question uh what before sure. before you continue when what was sure. what, what what did you want to ask walter oh um obviously um nickel boron not a, a internal barrel or, or a bore coating is it or is, or is that am i wrong uh, well it uh, we worked with uh, a couple socom contracts to test that out walter and uh, it ends up in a long skinny barrel you have a, a couple issues of cleaning the surface Right. because coatings that grow need a really good bond tenacious yeah. bond right, right, and right. then there's depletion of the chemistry as it's going from the bottom of the barrel yeah, up okay. to the top so because it's attaching as it's yeah right exactly okay. my, other, my other comment was i remember when the socom they tr they did the nickel borum on the on the saw and it ran too fast am i correct well um we actually <laughs> were able to slow it down they uh, couldn't yes. con the rpms picked up from the <laughs> And that's true. And uh, we, we did slow it down and we worked with FN and FN's got a, a really cool software program and uh, they, they measure the velocity group, the velocity curves, and we matched it exactly. We got an M249 to run lube free for 21,000 rounds. Pretty amazing. Wow. Like, and okay. FN was a big part of that, a, a right. part it, of the engineering. It could, it could have been the M4. When, once the M4 had been coded, it ran yeah. faster than they wanted it to run because of the coding. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I mean, and then they just slow down the rate, right? Yeah. Well, so there's different yeah. polishing techniques and different surface finishes you do. Um, so there's ways to manipulate, if you will, the coefficient of friction between the mating surfaces. But okay, okay. those but are big yeah. words. Those are big words for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. You just, uh, I'm you sorry. just slipperiness. <laughs> slow that thing down, man. Slow yeah. down. Brakes. There, there's ways Explosion. to put brakes on it. <laughs> Throw some gravel in there. Slow it Don't down. Don't hit us with big words. All right. Have obviously, All right. never seen this show, Wayne. <laughs> okay. Colors. Thankfully, I hope colors. you didn't. Uh, you didn't <laughs> look at this show you didn't look at this last night did you i hope not oh i, I saw you I've, I've seen your podcast before okay. i thought, I thought oh. they're great I, but you didn't look I, last night i hope no you no i didn't look last night they okay. were playing with good balls last night for no time. don't start walter <laughs> i don't even know what that was about i was listening like i said i was watching wonder woman yeah, and i was just start, watching walter. the i was watching the chat on the side commenting so. yeah we have to be professional we got win here um so so i think as P peter hinkle wants to know when how does nickel Teflon compare to nickel boron? What, what's, okay. the, what's the thing there? Yeah, uh, and we, we also apply nickel Teflon, and uh, we apply it mostly to dyes and release property uh, applications. Nickel Teflon is about a Rockwell um, 55 to 60. Nickel boron is a Rockwell 70 plus, if applied oh. correctly. Um, and uh, just for people out there who don't know, I'm not saying me, I'm asking for a friend. What is Rockwell? <laughs> Rockwell is hardness measurement. So you, hardness. you take an indenter and what's the, the what's the hardness of the, the material? And in coatings, you actually measure by a different thing, but I won't get into that. Okay. Um, so here's the question I have with nickel Teflon and, and it really brings to light the difference. Uh, nickel Teflon is electrolysis nickel with specks of Teflon up to 20 to 30% Teflon in the matrix. So you'll have, if you look at it from a cross section, you'd have black dots everywhere, 30%. Okay. And that's and that and the black dots are the Teflon. Uh, the, are the Teflon. Okay. Nickel boron is the same crystal throughout, so it's the same material. Now on the nickel Teflon, and even my metallurgists can't answer the question. They haven't answered the question. Is if you've got thirty percent of the Teflon at the bond line and nothing sticks to Teflon, how do you get bond? <laughs> yeah, how's the Teflon? <laughs> right? what, what's going on there? How they do don't have an answer because they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're growing over it, and so what's the most prevalent? issue with nickel Teflon is, is flaking and spalling if misapplied or e even in, in wear situations. It's a great concept that you're releasing Teflon when you wear and then you wear some more and you release some more Teflon, but nickel boron is harder. It's, it's damn near as, as lubricious or as slippery and it's the same material structure all throughout. So that's okay. why we put nickel boron on and I, again, we offer nickel Teflon and nickel boron nitride and for my money, if you're going to go with a composite coating like that, boron nitride handles temperature and pressure better than Teflon. Teflon okay. at 500 degrees, it's gone. It okay. And, and, and the pressure, you're making like a Nestle's crunch. 
if you will. <laughs> right. So it's, 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 it's like set up for um, set up for failure. So you so you were showing us that complete. Um, the, uh -huh. What's that? What was that gun coated with again? That's your nickel boron uh, gun. This right? is our this is our nickel boron, and this is our yeah. beast platform. And then, okay, so that's the beast, which I think I have a beast here. That would be a beast. Yes. Yeah, I think right. I actually I actually have a beast here. Uh, right. What is this? That, uh, that's our this... dirty beast. That that's the flat this... dark earth furniture. So that's a oh, dirty. Oh, this is the dirty beast. <laughs> oh, I like that already. I didn't even All realize right. that. Check out, check out the dirty beast. It's beautiful. You know. So so now let me ask you this. Um, so is it the same coating on the inside and outside or on everything? Yeah. One thing you'll notice if you thing? If you open the ejection port door there, Hank, mm -hmm. so you'll see that the bolt carrier okay. group is shiny. Right. That's the same coating. So the nickel boron as plated looks like that matte gray with a little goldish hue. Okay. But if we polish it, it comes out looking like chrome. And the reason we polish it is to eliminate the fouling, any surface that the fouling can adhere to. Oh, okay. So basically you pull that bolt carrier out and you wipe it on your pants and you put it back in and you keep shooting. And it's good to go. Okay, yeah. but it's all the same treatment because I was just what what same. I was going to ask you is like how you know how does that affect me handling it out here? Because I know sometimes with a gun, like if it's raining and stuff like that, you don't want it to get too slippery, right? Because mm -hmm. we were talking about uh, you said lubricity, lubricity, lubricity. Uh, I'm going to use that word now. Don't don't teach me words that have to do with <laughs> lubiness. That big big word. Uh, I, yeah, because I would refer to that as the lubiness factor of it. Well, <laughs> well, when you go home, say it's hard and lubricious. It's, it's, it's hard and lubricious, Lola. <laughs> yeah. You, when you get messages from Lola, Wynn, that's all you. I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't. I don't want to hear that. I'm gonna have to use that terminology next time. So, oh, yeah. so like, so how does this react out here if it gets wet and stuff like that? You know, like um, if it's in mud and whatever. It, it is it's it. impervious to uh, the natural environment. So uh, acids and uh, as long as you're not using nitric acid, which will dissolve nickel, you're okay. Um, so, oh, okay. but it doesn't get too. It doesn't get too slippery. Is what I'm asking you. No, um, no, okay. and it, it, okay. it's a protection uh, against okay. you know sand and dust and salt and fog and mm -hmm. and uh, salt water. Um, We've co we coated our our local Martin County uh, Sheriff Department shotguns, and that they use on patrol boats. And out here in the Southeast Florida, it's a pretty corrosive environment. We did that about you know ten years ago, and they still don't have a corrosion issue. So um, it's all good. It, it's a good hard dense hey, coating. It, does it care? Okay, aluminum steel. Obviously, the AR-15 is a combination of both. Right. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. It, it'll you can attach it to. Um, everything uh, we're we're developing the process on magnesium, but everything but magnesium and <laughs> zinc uh, so far. And it, there there are different processes. So you treat stainless steel different than you do steel than you do aluminum. So the pre-treat process, what we do in our plant, is different for those. But you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, and which yeah. that brings that brings to mind, um, and I'm gonna just tease this right now, but we'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, I know lots of folks know that we're doing we're building a dream gun, a 308 with stag arms. Um, they sent us the bones version of their 308, and then Brownells helped us out with that with the parts and everything. And then WMD Guns is gonna help us do the coating and the finishing to that gun before we give it away. So we're gonna talk about that here, right? You want to see that? Uh, yeah, let's see that briefly. We'll come back to it because I, 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 I want to go through I have your... A question. Uh, I have a question. I have a question. Uh-oh. Um, are you guys cl uh, class two? Uh, class three. Class three. So can you can I send you a machine gun they have coded? Yes, sir. Ooh. Uh-oh. <laughs> How, I, I ever do it's going to be some lubricity going on. <laughs> <laughs> you ever do a Sten gun? Uh, a Sten gun. No. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, Walter. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> okay. That's a good I, idea. Drive it, uh, drive it down, and my gunsmiths and I'll meet with you, and we'll we'll walk through the gun and and check okay. it out. We'll figure out how to. Yeah, because basically, Sten guns run really well dry. Okay. Um, as soon as you add oil, you add stickiness and gum and oh, yeah. and gross, you know the stuff from the from the you know the powder and all that stuff. So if you didn't have to ever oil it or, or grease it or anything, I think that stuff would work great and it looked cool too. Oh yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Meredith's Mayhem is asking if we dropped a link to WMD. It is in the description, um, but just you could just search on Google WMD Guns dot com. 
is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Does yeah, it um, there. Here's a question for you. When things are welded together, any effect, any difference, any? Um, as, as long as you can't have uh, aluminum and steel in the same assembly. Right, for right. Us but all coat. steel items, yeah. if they're all ferrous, so to speak, and right. they're all going to coat pretty well, much. Welds are good. Brazing is, is touchy because yeah, of the, yeah. you know yeah. different if it's a high temperature braze or silver solder uh you know that's okay but, but take, we take have well had with steel rod is cool yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have had brazing come apart like uh, on shotguns the sights or, or something on the top where right. uh the rail is is brazed on you know that's an issue but now before be, i'm sorry before we go on to anything else i'm going to stop here for a second real kojo real kujo has donated 50 bucks more again to the show oh. 50 bucks to the show he says it's for hard work and hooters for walter oh ah, <laughs> i'm jealous <laughs> we'll take he's, you we'll take we'll take you win <laughs> that's a bribe that's all yeah. i did that's a walter bribe. has that frequent flyer uh card at hooters my wife does too because she goes with yeah. me so. yeah so there you go so thanks real kujo we appreciate that man you know we uh we appreciate you supporting the hank strain situation yes. that's very generous and very nice of you thank you Hey, Hank, Lola says yeah. lubricity is the word of the day. So Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> lubricity. For anyone who's joining right now, and they're like, these dudes are off on some other stuff. So you were going to show, let's just briefly show the uh, Dream 308. Let's just show that for a second here. So it's in some stage of work. So this is the bone right. section of it. From se Can you, let's hold it up so everyone can see uh, that. Okay, so, so, so it used to be section. black. It used to be your standard anodized stag arm and we've oh. already stripped the anodize off okay that was my next question and yeah. and now we've nickel bore on the rail the upper the lower the buffer that tube so and, and cool. the buffer tube may change oh, okay and then there's the um tactical oh yeah that's um, right you got the um tactical on this. Hider. and that's my try to break yeah that's as that's as they sent it so we're not right. going to change that and then right. the barrels in there uh just as just as you say, the bones. So what we're looking yeah. for from from you, Hank, and your your viewers are what do we do with the nickel boron? We have a uh, we have like a camouflage kind of a muted camouflage we can do. I think that looks good. I, I like that. Um, we've I don't got, know what folks out there think. We've got uh, a. Um, we were gonna do. We were thinking about doing a yeah, tiger stripe for you. You like that, Walter? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, tiger stripe's cool. Yeah, that kind of looks like you would see that on uh, what's those those fifty AE pistols. Um, oh man, I can't believe them. What's what's the the fifty AE pistols that uh, those big massive pistols? Uh, Why am I? I'm drawing a blank. You yeah, see that too. on those a lot. They uh, they have the gold striped uh, thing all the time, but that's not oh nice. Desert Eagle. Desert Eagles, yeah. Oh um, yeah, that's a what's that? Fin Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh, the Desert Eagle. I was just gonna say we just finished a a, a golden gun with a desert eagle oh. all titanium nitride oh. it's, it was bling 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 i just shipped it off today but so no, great... what is this one this is kind of like a, a patinaed look a right? copper patina right so this yeah. looks like it was sitting at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> <laughs> and it'll like, still run <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that, that i think that's interesting now yeah, that's that interesting be, yeah yeah, I think that's really interesting that one that you just showed but okay. i know there's but you know we're giving this away to someone Someone out there, I don't know if you guys know about this, but we have several videos. You can go look at it's the uh, the uh, stag stag arms brownells and and now obviously WMD guns. We're giving away this thing. It's a dream gun, and uh, you you can see the details of it there. But we don't know who is going to get it, so I don't want to make it something where the dude is like that. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I would totally love that though. I like that look. I've never seen that ever. That, on a is that is that kind of like a you know a case hardening looks like? Is that kind of a case hardening look? Um, it's more of an antiques copper. You know, if you're looking oh, okay, at a copper okay, dome okay. and it okay. starts turning blue and green. Kind of patina, yeah. like a yeah. copper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It looked like the Statue of Liberty used to look, remember? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, but with that, that's cool to me. So, and um, I think now, where's the, uh, where's the camouflage one that you had, Wynn? Oh, the, the camouflage. Yeah. Oh, there's a really good, now there's a muted camouflage and then there's, there's one that, um, that I can is, I don't want you to tell any trade secrets, but how do you apply that? If, is, are certain parts like mass when you dip or how does that, how does that yeah hold? you could you can do appliques um 
And then, so on nickel boron, if we're doing this, that's just nickel boron camouflage. So we're putting um, appliques on in the camo pattern. And blocking and it in certain and spots. It's, yeah, and it's not darkening the nickel boron. Okay. So it's a it's a pattern nickel boron, NIDX yeah. camo. Yeah, I like that look. really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we got some comments here. Um, let's see what we've got here. Uh, someone says you've got to do battle worn, the battle worn look. We were thinking about that. I was thinking about doing like an OD green battle worn look. Um, let's see. Uh, Tony London bat. says, I wonder if they have nickel plating chrome effect. So this is the battle worn look. Yeah, that's a battle worn. So yeah. And uh, you get the nickel boron, and it's and it's blackened, and then yeah, uh, worn yeah, off in the corners. Yeah. Distressed. Yeah, distressed. Now is it, now exactly how is right. That different from it, is that the same thing as what's on this AK or yes, yes. What do we? Okay, so that's, that's the right. same kind of thing like that's on this AK. I just like it. Dark Although the, like. the wood, the wood of this AK really brings this out. I think so. That's yeah. the thing with this. And you guys did treatment on this wood or no? Yes. Yeah, we distressed that wood. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I think here it works really great. I I'm not sure about how that's going to look on the 308. Um, you know, I think that's one of those things that people have different preferences on it. Yeah, you're going to find a wide. Yeah. So tell us what you like. We're showing a bunch of different stuff, and then also when um, is going to show a bunch of different guns that they have. And if you guys have a look or an idea of something that we're not saying, Walter, saw, do you have a preference? I saw in his um. Some pictures of all these bright colors. Oh yeah, we have these are anodized. So I've got um, at the shot show this year. You know, as part of it, it, it seemed like colors were a big thing for yeah. folks, and everyone was coming out with different um, kind of colors. Whether they use Cerakote, these are anodized, and, and so we were able to uh, wow. advance and anodize and get it all to match. And what, what oh, so you guys can actually get that anodizing to match because we've spoken to guys and that's what what level is anodizing is that this is a, a type two is the the colored anodize oh, okay and um so you know you get d different different yeah. reds and contrast I like the, that's a them. nice red that's a nice evil looking red it's like kind of like a hell boy hell boy yeah. i like yeah. that red hell boy it's pretty yeah. cool <laughs> the, the show that again show that again when that was too slow that was too fast oh, too fast too fast hell boy okay. we, we like to savor our gun porn around these parts and then you get the <laughs> so highlights so what we're doing what we're doing too is you'll notice the rich um Ejection port door and the forward assist, that's melanite. And we're the only ones oh. doing the melanite on assemblies like that. Yeah. And, and your so, logo you know, stands out here. Your, length, your logo stands right. out with that color. It looks yeah. really good. Yeah. The ink fill that we do. Mm -hmm. And so these are really rich components um, instead of the, nice the old color, phosphate. Man. Yeah. I really like this color. This look, That looks really good. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Vanessa Kitty says uh, he likes the red. Um, uh, he also says, don't select me for the dream gun. Connecticut probably has them listed as evil assault type. Yes. <laughs> I know that that's the problem with Connecticut, man. That's sad. Yeah. You know, Mike Bryan says maybe battle worn and stripes like the guns from district nine. That would be epic. Um, you know, what was I just going to ask? So, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. that's real. Yeah, what were you going to ask Walter? Um, it came in and went out. With all yeah. that, I saw the Hellboy gun there, and it just kind yeah, of yeah. That just put thoughts in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? What we should do? It. Listen, let me let me ask you. You want this. your fifty? You want your fifty cal like that? Yes, that's what I was going to ask you, oh, man. Wow. Walter is making me a fifty cal, but a shortened fifty cal. It's like it's like SBR <laughs> length. Yeah, yeah, it's SBR short. How about making that like a Hellboy gun? No, no, I'm not going to do that. No, no. <laughs> oh. Now I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get it from the start. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah, I start think with that would white be cool. parts. Now, you know, now, yeah. now, when I'm um, speaking of that, um, uh, obviously the barrel's gonna be like nitrided or something. Sure. Um, and everything else, uh, all yeah, it's just all pieces. I'll just send it to you. You do it. I just take it back and I assemble it basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And actually, what I want to do, there's this, because um, uh, I'm into, uh, I'm, you know, I'm a big nerd, so I'm into sci-fi fantasy stuff. And there's this uh, fantasy writer, and his name is Larry Correa. You, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, Wayne. Larry Correa. No. 
No. He writes these uh, series of books called Monster Hunter. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's guys that go overseas and everything. They love these books because he's a real gun guy. And in his stories, they're like, you know, for example, he's got like Frankenstein monster and werewolves and all that. But but the um, it's a company and they're called Monster Hunter International. And they fight they fight all these zombies and different creatures and they use guns. But all the action in there is like real gun stuff. And he's a real genuine gun guy. I see him at SHOT Show all the time. And so there's lots of folks that build guns, and they call them Monster Hunter guns, and they make up their own groups and stuff like that. So I think, you know, it's going to be kind of like Hellboy, but, you know, we should do it like, you know, the Hank Strange division of uh, <laughs> Monster Hunter International. You know, if you think so. about, uh, you know, f making a futuristic version that includes the the sites. And so this is an ACOG, Trigicon ACOG that's nipped oh, wow. on. Okay. And so... It, it makes it really sexy when yes, you're, you're matching. Sexy. So, <laughs> okay, now, so now you put the lights and you put the grenade launcher, you put the the electromagnetic gun on the bottom and <laughs> the rail gun. You know, yeah, 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 the rail gun. <laughs> so that's so, cool. so that's a good question right yeah. there. I think like how do you guys do that? Because you're you're able to do different surfaces then. If you did well, the, my question is how do you do it? You have to disassemble the ACOG and do the parts individually the and reassemble it. How does that work? Well, they're one of the companies that that were nickel okay. boroning for the okay. shell okay. before they put it together. Okay, you cheated. But, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's a sexy, it's oh, a yeah, sexy yeah. unit yeah. though. Once you get it, it's, oh so no, it no, is, it, really, that's cool. That's a factory thing then from ACOG. Yes. Yeah. yeah so you're Trichicon. saying that people could buy that Trichicon like that? Yes. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, they came out with it a couple shot, like three shot shows ago. It kind of disappeared for some reason, but it's back, and uh, it'll be in their catalog. And if if more people call them up, it'll come out faster. But yeah. We've oh, got so I go. see people doing that all day. So if someone buys that yeah. ACOG and and they have that for their gun, can they then send their gun to you for you to match it? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. So part of our upgrade is, is I've got a staff of gunsmiths and armors. And so people send us their 1911. We take it apart. We strip all the old coatings off of it. And then we'll coat it with nickel boron or nickel boron and nitride. And so we can mix and match coatings. And then we put it back together for them and then ship it back to them. So yeah. if you, if yeah. for just, for, this is just my, me thinking here. So you got your run of the mill 1911, which, you know, you're made in Turkey, made in the Philippines. 1911 you get it nickel boron and all that trick coatings it comes back it's a it's a trick gun then right yes sir it, it's almost unrecognizable <laughs> yeah you know we, we might have to do that yeah <laughs> yeah we're, we're i listen the reason why when i met when i actually met when at big daddy guns so you know full disclosure thank you scott <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's all that, well uh yeah scott and john yeah, absolutely. Good okay. guys. Good guys yeah. over there. So, you know, I, I met Win over there and I was like, yeah, this is <laughs> this yeah. is too good to I be had, true. Now, now, let me, <laughs> Don't get me started. Up, let me go back in time here. Uh -huh. nickel, nickel boron is a high heat resistance, correct? Yeah, it, it melts okay. at 2100 degrees. Okay. Yeah. Now, before you were doing your own thing, you said you were doing it with somebody else. Um, I, I was. I, I was. Are, at they, a are, they, are they they're also in Florida? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Back in the day when I was doing my started doing my 50 cal stuff, I had this idea that I could try to make a muzzle break out of aluminum. So I, I, I did some 70 75, had them had the brake machine, then I had it coated with nickel boron. Ah. And um uh, uh Yeah, so uh, just a quick about 20 quick... rounds later, the side of the muzzle brake blew out. That's a long story short, but um because of the heat and the you know, it just when that you know, now, the blast comes comes out like, the front of that aluminum, on that aluminum, it's like a plasma torch, I think. So yeah. It, now, when you coat an egg, Walter, you still have an egg yeah, underneath. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it was just an. It was an, it was an experiment. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you're on a, you're on the right track though, because, um, so this suppressor, we tested it raw, we tested it with the coating on it, and we tested it with the Cerakote high temp, ninety rounds. And the, the the raw suppressor got to 760 degrees. Mm -hmm. The Cerakote one got to 750 degrees. This coated suppressor got to 360 degrees. Wow. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was, 700 and some versus 300 and some. It was dissipating the heat faster. So, yeah. Or so you're was, saying it's like a heat. It's like a heat shield. Yeah. yeah. So it, it does dissipate heat very fast. And then I talked to the suppressor engineer, and he goes, "Well." 
if you're retaining the heat, then you're also increasing the sound reduction. Right, you're keeping the heat in the in the suppressor. Right, because that works better as you co it's cooler the better. That's all sound. I, I'm yeah. a mechanical engineer, so I'm not a sound engineer, but it all made sense after yeah. he kind of. That's why you put you put you put liquid in a, a suppressor to keep it cool. Right? Yeah. Right. So let so, me ask you. So, so we ahead, have sorry. we have coated uh, aluminum cores for suppressors for little okay. twenty two suppressors. Right. right. So flash hider. You know, I, I can understand your frustration there. Yeah, no, I wasn't. It was just a. It yeah. just let me see what happens, and Boom. and <laughs> and you can see you can see the heat ate right through the. I hate to say it because when it comes out of the barrel like that, it's almost like plasma. Sure. It's so freaking hot when it comes sure. right as it initially leaves the barrel, and it eroded the aluminum. Once it got through that initial surface, it eroded the aluminum. It just failed. You know, oh, but I, I see. a lot of pressure there too. That's a tremendous amount of pressure when it comes out of there too. Yeah. So. Oh. No, so I wasn't. Go ahead. I wasn't surprised. <laughs> I had to try it out, though. So <laughs> there's a bunch of questions from people. Um, let's see here. Um, there's some people that want SHTF 50s treated um, yeah. by WMD guns. Well, that so, would have to. Um, that would we'll, have to we'll, be something that would be yeah. extra, obviously. So we yeah, can figure but that we'll out. yeah we'll negotiate something with Win. Yeah. We got him here. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so let's see. So people have ideas. There's things they want to know. Oh, they want to know about your um, social media when so yeah. what social media are you on? And can you just tell folks real quick uh, how to reach you guys on social media? Yeah. Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, on Instagram? Uh, Holden, uh, Holden yeah. does that for me. Dead gun. Yeah. Um, YouTube. I've got a YouTube channel, WMD guns. Um, I'm doing it right now. Yeah, yeah, do it, do it for me if you would. <laughs> yeah, so just for anyone who it's wants to know, you can um, here. I'll show you guys. Um, so there, there you go. For anyone who wants to know, and it's it WMDGuns. Yeah, just WMD Guns. I don't know if you're getting a good look at it. I got it. I got there you it. go. WMD Guns on Instagram, and um, and you said on Facebook and YouTube, right? Everything's just WMD yes. Guns. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I got it. And then uh, just a, yeah. <laughs> I did a, a nine millimeter carbine and you can see oh. the gold. <laughs> I put a little oh. bling on the end. You just know what? To, I, I oh, was, wait. <laughs> what? No, when, when you were talking cool. about gold, I was thinking Sodom gun. Sodom is gun. <laughs> no, that's, that's cool. Can so, you see this? Uh, hey, Hank, how about this little guy all gold? Oh, my goodness. That would just be too boss. That <laughs> oh, would just yeah. be badass. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it, Walter. I don't I don't think you should do I it. I don't know if it's um, worthy or not. No, no, it's, it's no, you should do it. You should do it. You fix that gun up, right? So you want to tell you've got that um tell people a little bit. Tell Win about that. Real well, quick. this inner ordinance um I traded Hank for something and and um he dumped this thing on me. Um no, I I, 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 I was fully aware of it. But anyways, it had some serious issues. The gas gas tube was all loose and the bolt carrier and the gas piston was all funny. So I fixed it all up, and it's working. It worked when I got it from him, but it just was scary. But I fixed it up, and it's going all right and everything. Yeah, now, here's the funny thing. When I um I, I have that gun, and I did a video with it. I shot it a couple times. It was fine. But, yeah, if that – from what Walter found when he went in there, I think when we when we test some guns, we're going to start letting Walter open them up <laughs> <laughs> and go in there and see what's going on. Because Walter opened that thing up, and there was some serious problems, right? Yeah, it was kind of scary the way they put it together. I don't know how they – get away with that i really don't um yeah um, um but i, I think, think they I do think so. i don't think they do so um <laughs> now when have you do you know a dude named mike fry mike fry yeah he says he uh he doesn't he's like this he's my buddy mike fry very good dude and he says i don't mean to interrupt your show again but i met when in arlington early this year we had a few pickleback shots after oh. dinner Great guy. Tell him, tell him Mike Fry says hi. <laughs> I know exactly yeah. the instance that where yeah, I met that's, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that's my brother right there. That's my boy. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, if yeah. you haven't had picklebacks, uh, I <laughs> what <is> recommend that? <laughs> it. Man, what's a pickleback? <laughs> it's a Jameson's with pickle juice. Oh, oh no! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and the first one. You should never have told me that and just ordered me one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just. I, I just do it. It was good. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I have to have not... I have to have one of those with one of those McDonald's gangbangs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, I, see, I don't know. Let's explain this to Win before he thinks. You know, <laughs> weird. So, have you ever oh, heard? I, of, I've got to go. <laughs> uh, have you ever heard of uh, McDonald's? You know, McDonald's has a secret menu. I don't know if you know, know that. So oh, there's, this is actually um, we looked into this. We haven't. Um, yeah, Mike Fry says pickle juice is a chaser. Um, oh, so McDon if you go to McDonald's and you go up to the window and uh, when when you do this, please have your your phone rolling on video. <laughs> um, but this is a real thing. We're not trying to trick you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you go to McDonald's and you say you want the Mc the Mc uh, McGangbang McGangbang yeah McGangbang. And it's a special sandwich. Uh, who remembers what it was? It's a, a chicken patty with two, uh, I guess, hamburger patties. Yes. Yeah. Sandwiching it up. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. It's a special sandwich. So remember, you learned about that on the uh, Who Moved My Freedom podcast. <laughs> no one is. Right. I've been. I've been asking people to do it and do video. And uh, and you know what? I was. I had to stop and pick up. Uh, McDonald's for my son today when and I totally forgot about that. <laughs> we went there for lunch today actually. So yeah, I, and I completely forgot. So I'm also at fault. I think I prefer so. to be in the uh, passenger seat videotape and the driver who <laughs> yeah, asked for it. <laughs> yeah, can you just see the headline? Like, yeah. Uh, CEO of WMD Guns asked to <laughs> McDonald's. It's, it's a McDouble with a McChicken in the middle. Yeah. In the inner. yeah. So, okay, let's get serious no, here. No, There's, no, no, no. Um, so okay, so I think this was Lola had this question, but um, how do these coatings hold up on the water and salt, like in uh, Coast Guard type situations? So if there's people that want to use these guns, you know, in the service, but they've got like a lot of salt seawater kind of duty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, corrosion is a design element um, for coatings, and so what we do in the case where we're looking for extraordinary uh, corrosion resistance is you put an underlayer down that seals it in a laminar fashion, and then you grow the coating up on top, and so it completely seals the substrate, and then you grow the wear resistant, the lub lubricious coating on top of that. Um, I actually, um, we passed 3,000 hours of salt fog with a la an underlayer and then a layer of nickel boron. Uh, for a Navy application for the DDG, um, one, uh, the, the new one that got canceled years and years ago. But it passed 3,000 hours of salt fog, which is really extreme. Uh, oh, okay. So so it is a good application. Yeah. Well, but, it's yeah. it's designed. For example, the DL, the diamond light carbon coatings that are so popular now, that's a line of sight coating. So you can't just go put it on steel and then the the inner diameters won't get coated. And that coating is only two to four microns thick. So you don't have a, a real good corrosion protection just with that coating alone. So you have to start thinking about the integration of it with another corrosion barrier. Okay. So cool. Um so let me let me try to go down a few more questions. Uh, what what is the price range of WMD rifles? We're getting a lot of crazy stuff. No, I'm just down. reading the things. <laughs> My body is a lubricious baby. <laughs> no, 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 you're supposed to say it like this. Hey, baby, my body is lubricious. <laughs> you know what? Can I tell you something? That would be that would be a good name for your babies. So anybody having a baby, <laughs> lubricious? Yeah, name your baby lubricious. All right, <laughs> Hank. Hank, when you go use that, I want your phone on ready on video, and I want you to videotape that <laughs> and send it to me when you use that line. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I will get I will get knocked out. <laughs> so um. So, okay, so I'm not sure who this is, but um, people want to know what is the price range of these WMD rifles when? Yeah, the, the entry level, which is our uh, environmental patrol rifle, is $1,000, and the Beast, as you saw it, was uh, 1450 retail. Right, so that, that Beast, and uh, I don't know what, what's mine. Yeah, that Beast would be 1450 It comes with a tactical Drago bag and two magazines that are coated. Right, so... So these beasts are they just uh, five five six or are they also three oh eight? No, we have a, a big beast three oh eight, which would be okay. The big beast is the three oh eight. Okay, the big beast is, so is the three oh eight. Right. And um, and what's the so price range on something like that? The big beast is twenty three ninety nine. They all all of our guns start with match grade barrels. It doesn't do any good to to paint a pig. I mean, you, you've got to right? coat in a pig is a pig. So we start with excellent components. So match grade barrels, MOA or better. And then we go from there. And there then, L, LR pattern? 
LR pattern. Um, for the for the three hundred eights, or I mean, I know there's different patterns for the. Yeah, I'd have to get Holden on on you on that. He's my okay. competitive range guy, and uh, okay. also the different types of ammo that that's appropriate. Uh, oh, we do okay. have a six five Creedmoor now. Um, that. Oh. I had a chance to take out to a thousand rounds recently, or a thousand okay. yards. I'm sorry, okay. and uh, that was a hoot. So that so you've got the six. What are you calling the uh, the six five? Is it Creedmoor? You said six yes. five Creedmoor. Six five yeah. Creedmoor. So okay, because I think you're calling the five five six um, the dirty beast, right? Yeah, the dirty beast has the flat dark earth furniture, and the okay. regular beast has the black furniture. So what is the? Pro I'm holding up the dirty beast here, dude. Yeah. Just so you want it, if you, you know, um, did you guys make this muzzle device? Uh, that's a PWS muzzle device. Yeah, PWS. PWS. Okay. So right. there you go. So this is the Dirty Beast. It looks like it's got, is this? Um, it's all this... billet. That's a billet upper receiver and lower receiver. Okay. And the uh, furniture, is it Hogue or? The furniture, it's, it's a, uh, it's a TI-7 buttstock. Okay. And an ergo grip. Okay. Very, oh, it's Argo. Yeah, I know. It yeah. looks familiar. And, and then we work with the manufacturers to specify and, and uh, make sure that our bolt carrier groups are to our specifications. So we we give them the dimensions on that. Uh, it's a billet. You may have a billet charging handle. It's got the ridges on the back there, Hank. Yeah, so that's it. The charging a, handle. Yeah, a right billet there. charging yeah. handle, yeah. extended latch. So there you um, go, extended latch. So what's the price of something like the Dirty Beast? That's MSRP of fourteen fifty. Okay, that's not with, bad. With consider a, that this whole thing is like uh, it's you know nickel boron treated. That's yeah, yeah. And nitride on the bore of the barrel, so that right. you know you start MOA and you're going to last MOA thirty percent longer than chrome. So oh, okay, pretty yeah. cool. And then so what are you guys calling the uh, six five Creedmoor? Because that's if that's the dirty beast, <laughs> and then we and have the 308 is the big beast. <laughs> we haven't we haven't named it a beast yet. It must be a long beast yeah. or <laughs> the long drive beast. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, and people want to know what's with the beast names. Um, yeah. Remember years ago when um, we were all a bit younger, and you'd say something was beast because it was bad. It was just. You know, oh, beast. Out, out of this world. Oh, I, I get it. Beast. Right. Yeah. Like that's beast. That's right. a beast. Um, that's yeah. that's where it, the genesis came yeah. from. No, I like it. And uh, and by the way, listen, if you're ever looking for a name of something, like let's say like this six five creep more, <laughs> you don't have a name. I have a suggestion. Oh, well, here it goes. Hanks. <laughs> check this out. Check this out. Hanks Beast. Hanks Beast. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see you shoot it. We'll have to that's see what we'll do. That's I'll do it. I'll it. To that's put my name on something, I will do it. I'm trying that's, to get Walter to put my name on a gun. That's, for years. That's, save that for the Hellboy Red one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. oh, we are gonna we are gonna laser engrave Hank Strange somewhere on the ejection port cover door. So we're looking for uh, somebody to come up with a design for us on that. Maybe yeah, throw that out to the crowd, Hank. Yeah, I've got to get a. I've got to come up with some kind of um, oh, Hank Strange thing because where's it going? It's going to go on the, the the bottom of the ejection port cover door. So when it opens up, they're hit with Hank Strange. Hank Strange. Oh, so it's going to be down here, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so we need so. like a two panel. We need a two panel um, Just, logo thing then. Logo. Are all the are the markings on the side? That's all laser engraved. Yes, that was that was uh, milled into the. Uh, receivers as it was built yeah no but yeah. i mean how does 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 a laser work well on the oh yeah yeah okay. you can either laser the coating after it's applied or um what we do is we we mill the the logos and then we coat okay. it and then you can ink fill it yeah oh, yeah right. hamburger help us as strange beast i like that too i like strange that beast. Strange that beast. sounds yeah. sexy I think we're on to something. Man, I, <laughs> yeah. that. I will totally let you use my logo and put those strange all over beast. the strange beasts. Yeah. Strange beast. <laughs> we could, you know what? We could take my, because, uh, you know, um, it's basically like a Jolly Rogers, you know, skull and crossbones. Yeah. We just, yeah. We'll just make the skull some kind of beast and we'll put a big uh, mohawk on him. I like you know? it. I so, like it. Now, um, okay, so I got a couple of most, a uh, couple more questions here. Um, I think Tyvin wants you to hold up the bluish copper colored one again. So that's oh. our buddy, the Tyvin show. Uh, All right. 
And somebody's asking about um, for the saw, the twenty-one thousand rounds. What kind of time frame was that done in? Um, that was done according to the military protocol okay. of okay. of um, there's an I. It's called an I top for shoulder yep. fire weapons. Okay. And the time frame it took us um, probably a week. Okay. You're doing two hundred round belts, and I think right. it was eighty-five rounds per minute in bursts. Okay. And then you do so a full it's, belt. It's, it's, and, realist, and, it's kind of a realistic test. It's not one of these crazy. Let's burn twenty thousand rounds in two hours. Yeah. Oh no! It, it was it was all registered and and per right, army right. specifications with FN conducting the test with me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, I think Mike Bryant has a cool idea for those panels. He says to put peace to put the letters peace on one panel and then the uh, this on uh, on another panel because I always do that. You know, I have this thing, you know, Sivas Passum Parabellum, you know, which is basically if you seek peace, prepare for war. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's, I don't know. I, I still yeah. like. Uh, yeah. The logo. The, the logo. Well, yeah. The other thing. Yeah. It needs to be yeah. more aggressive. Right. Um, so there you go. Now, let me see. Um, OK. So people want to know, like, what would make it the uh, dissipate heat faster you know, what's the metallic makeup and density and all that? I was interested in that as well, where you said that this, because right. this is almost like a heat shield, right? Um, well, it's, uh, I'm, I'm reaching back for a Watch. brief that I need to get for you. Okay. And um, I'll show you the texture of it. So um, if you picture the coating growing up, like this is the substrate your hand is a substrate and it grows up in columns like your finger okay so then you put your fingers together and mm -hmm. it looks like a broccoli field right okay. so you can see all the surface area that's been created mm -hmm. and then if you zoom up on that oh, broccoli so like, field so on a microscopic level oh, that's what it looks, it looks like. like this so it's actually it's actually oh. like a almost like a, a radiator or a yeah exactly or a so, cooling fins on your electronic device where you wow. right yeah. So you've increased the surface area by about four times oh, what okay. you coated. And then the the structure of the coating, the crystal, is a nickel-3 boride. And um, in different studies, we've seen different things about what how that crystal reacts to uh, heat as well. Does and it – does that crystalline structure, the heat the, – go like copper where it, the heat radiates off it faster or, or? – um, yeah, so it, three years ago, we did a, a third-party test on a coated suppressor, phosphate versus nickel boron, and it cooled up. Well, it heated up 100 degrees slower and then cooled down 100 degrees faster than the phosphate. Okay. So a phosphate hmm. would usually ramp up like this, and that nickel boron coated one would go whoop uh, and, then and then whoop like that. So yeah. okay. they reach the same temperature because obviously the coating's only you know half a thou thick, right. but it it did have a a, a very uh, interesting and dynamic reaction with um yeah. with with getting the heat out and protecting the baffle from erosion and helping with cleanup on disassembled uh, suppressors. So it, it's. Uh, what we're doing with suppressors now is really going to be something in 2018 when we release at SHOT Show. So, yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, Tango mm -hmm. Hunter, I'm, I'm going to come back to that real quick. Tango Hunter says, I can't stop saying lubricious. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so much fun? <laughs> I don't know. It is. It is. I'm telling you, that has to be a dude's name, lubricious. <laughs> I, I, you don't want to name your daughter lubricious. I'm going to do that. But you can name your son um, Lubricious. <laughs> a middle name, maybe? <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, and guys, don't forget to click the thumbs up if we're amusing you. We so appreciate with a, that. So, so with a suppressor, if if, you're, if your internals are coated with that, you might not necessarily need ink canal and things like that? Um, that that's correct. Um, you okay. think about why you're using ink canal and an expensive uh, material like that. You're, it's a very heat-tolerant you know, nickel it's alloy like air, it's, steel, it's, you know, it's an aircraft engine and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm totally asking this for a friend, you know, a friend of mine bought one of those integrally suppressed rifles. And, um, from, uh, <laughs> from Daniel defense and, you know, it has a very low profile handguard, right? So therefore the handguard and everything is really close 
to the suppressor part of it is that if you know if you're worried about heat and all that kind of stuff there so far as holding it would that be a good thing to do to it it is but it still gets hot i'm telling right. you that you know I, we code every part of this and and my handguard still gets hot and this is a low profile handguard as well mm -hmm. i mean you still need a glove if you're gonna get out there okay. and run and gun hot but it, it does help get rid of the heat quicker so you can pick it up again sooner okay uh, and, the, sure, and the big part of it is like probably what walter is saying is that it's going to help make it really easy for you to service yeah and think about that. threading and unthreading so think about how hard it is when all the fouling and the goop oh yeah <laughs> it, it's con condensing inside the suppressor and now you're trying to unscrew the thing to clean it so there's um when you're putting uh, some performance coatings on that you get anti-galling, anti-stick, easy release. Yeah. So that okay. you can get it apart to clean it. Yeah. Right. Um, no, and that's a, that's really that's really cool. By the way, um, Mike Bryant says uh, no. Is my is it Mike Bryant? Yeah. He said he had a friend named Lucius who went by <laughs> Luke, but he liked calling him Lucius. And then Chris B says, "How about magically lubricious?" I said it's magically oh. lubricious, oh, like Lucky Charms. Yeah, that should be a T-shirt. Lola, make a note. I got, I got Should that. I... NIBX <laughs> magically lubricious. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Someone make a. Okay, you know what, Win? Make a T-shirt. Win got... says it's magically lubricious. Yeah. If you, um, <laughs> if you, if you don't have someone that makes T-shirts for you, Win, I do have uh, a company that makes T-shirts. They're doing our T-shirts, Forge from Freedom. So, all right, there you okay, go. Here's you know, that's a good guy. Ken, Ken, Ken Helmer says strangely lubricious beast. <laughs> yeah, like we could that. just we could just go on with this and all. You're and such on a strangely lubricious beast, you are. Yeah, we can go on with it, but no, I think actually, I mean, that's a really. So, what would a coating like that cost when to do something for your suppressor, or is that um, expensive? Well, there. When we do it thousands at a time or hundreds yeah. at a time, it's not. It's not. Yeah. So, Let me give you an example. When we coat, a, a person sends us his bolt carry group in. I charge a hundred dollars for my guys to take it apart. We strip the other coatings off and we recoat it, put it back, and we put it in a box and send it back to them. It gets a hundred bucks. A, a nineteen eleven is two hundred and fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. um, to yeah. strip down and coat what we coat and put it back yeah. together for so you. So we can't just like start sending stuff in <laughs> unless you ball it like that. Well, no, with yeah. with a send it in with a check and you'll get it yeah. back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Now, well, if you think lot, about it, if you take that run of the mill nineteen eleven like I was talking about and you get it coated, it's going to be balling when it comes back because you don't have to do anything else to it. Yeah, yeah you're, talk, I know. you're talking you about know. a Kimber or you know. Or even uh, if you just buy a. So you're saying not a high point. No. He said no. He said no zinc. You weren't listening. <laughs> Wait, high point zinc. Yes, yeah, it's called die did I, say, did I say no zinc or no crap? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Cool. so I take it then when that you've never done a high point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was talking about zinc. Zinc is such a crappy metal. Dude. Right, right, it's so right, porous. Right. So porous. Okay. What's the turnaround time? Uh, turnaround time. We just re-engineered the process. In fact, I had the, the process closed for a few months while we caught up uh, on our backlog. So we're, mm -hmm. we're engineered uh, down to about a three-week turn. Okay, right three weeks. Three weeks. Well, okay. Used to be eight. So we're, Ta Tango we're, Hunter still teasing me about the, the PSA gun. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, and no, wind doesn't want to coat that. No. <laughs> well, I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't. I yeah. Know. It, it's, yeah. The process no, is the same. No, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know why. Probably make it work a lot better. Well, you don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. I know. <laughs> It'll yeah. be all lubricious. It'll be magic. It'll be lubricious to then. Well, yeah. well, that's what you, you have to shoot it before you send it to me because otherwise you'll blame me that it doesn't, it doesn't work. work. <laughs> <laughs> that's a damn so, um, <laughs> Right. So I, think, I, I can't remember well, so if we – go ahead. That's a, that's a good question. So somebody sends you your their AR-10, just their Armalite AR-10. Everything is going to be cool with the tolerances and the additional um, uh, coatings and everything. There's not going to be issues, or do you have to make? That's make a great, great question. Um, because when we when we coat aluminum, we match the anodized growth thickness, and is okay. is a lot of people because you're going to strip the anodizing off, which takes a little bit of that. It takes more off, right? right so right, right. anodize is a a thaw diffused into the substrate and a thaw growth if it's mil spec. So right. 
when you strip it off, you're stripping it back down to here. So we actually have to put more coating on right. to get it back to spec on, okay. uh, on yeah. aluminum. Yeah. Um, on the bolt carrier group, there there's sometimes some concerns, and we always recommend that you headspace your bolt carrier group always. Right. Um, but in the most cases, when they're sending me in worn, you know, or fired bolt carrier groups, that there's there's enough. There's a tenth or two there I mean, that it, I can play with. You can always nitrite the those parts, which doesn't really that doesn't add things. Nitriting doesn't, from what I understand. It, it doesn't. It's a diffusion technology, but right. what we're careful with on that is the high temperature. Uh, nitriding is conducted at about 1,050 oh, degrees. Yes. That's okay. That's great for a carrier, but for a bolt that's been heat treated, shot yeah, peened, right, right, and, right, right. and you're trying to control the stress right. on that, if you if you go to those temperatures, you'll change the... Yeah, you anneal the, the substrates, and it, that concerns me. Right, uh, right. Michael Smith wants to know, can you guys coat polymer pistol frames? <laughs> Only with Cerakote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they can, so I guess with the ceramic uh, coatings. Yeah. 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 Um, can. Yeah. Only. Uh, is Nibix thinner than Cerakote? Uh, Nibix. Uh, yes. Nibix. For the most part. It can be thicker yeah. if you want it to be. We can yeah. coat it up to like 5,000. Cerakote is typically a thou per side. Okay. Some yeah, Walter Nibix is what is what they're is like the acronym for um, the nickel oh, boron. Okay. Okay. I, you yeah. know, I'm not an acronym guy. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. So that question was from Mike Bryant. Um, okay. I thought it was some kind of like you know African princess or something. The Nibix. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so Diamond Moto wants to know, Walter, is that the PA10 stainless 18 Mac pole? He also bought one of those. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. got a. Stainless barrel, yeah. Yeah, and it has Magpul furniture. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So he yeah. bought. And what did you pay for that, Walter? I paid six thirty nine for it. Six thirty nine. So, did it come with that optic? No, that's. I threw the aim point. No, the aim point's okay. gone. So, <laughs> no, it didn't come with a Swedish made just, aim point. Just checking. <laughs> no. Just no, checking. No. Um, so then, Tyvin wants to know if you can coat the plastic lowers of a Glock. No. You know, no Sarah coating. I guess you can do that right. if you want to. Yeah, a lot of people have seen the the um, silver Glocks out there, the NIBX Glocks. We did that by the thousands for distributors, mm -hmm. uh, but we never we never back then they weren't interested in the color on the frame, so we never did a ceramic yeah. on the on the grip or the frame or anything in a Glock. Yeah. Okay, so what do you know? This is this is off topic, but what do you know about the new coating that Glocks using on the um, on the Gen fives? You know, it's some kind of diamond. Uh I guess it's like a hybrid, right? Have you seen yeah, that? Non-attributional. Um, they've installed a DLC um, plant in their facility. Um, so it's a diamond-like carbon coating. They call it N-DLC. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. So it's just a diamond-like. Yeah. They're, keep, and, they're keeping it in the house, so to speak. Yeah. yeah and if, if I had to guess... Um, they're they're nitriding it and then they're doing the DLC over that because the DLC won't provide enough corrosion protection by itself to meet the mill spec. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Clock didn't get the mill spec, did they? <laughs> the oh, mill they, contract. No, no. They didn't. so there is. Yeah, there, there's no terms. <laughs> yeah. There's no terms, Walter, for that. And then I think I, I think we covered this. But someone says, uh, "Did you coat? Do you coat the inside of the barrels? If so, how does it compare to chrome lined?" I asked about that. Yeah. yeah. So you, they probably yeah. missed it, but you can go over it again if you don't mind, Win. Yeah. Um, on on shotgun barrels and short pistol barrels, we can uh, NIB exit. Uh, we can certainly nib exit, and it'll outlast chrome. It's it's about thirty percent harder than chrome. In long mm -hmm. AR barrels um, and skinny barrels, uh, you want to nitride them. Is the best per, uh, melanite is the best performing coating. Um, there is a uh, technology we work with blaze and i'll give you the three data points chrome went in the m4 carbine recompete that the army was running there were some oems that were obviously preparing their weapons for that uh, competition chrome and and this was the first competition by the way where they specified that after 15,000 rounds the carbine actually had to still be accurate and they gave it some accuracy specs okay um, so chrome lasted six to eight thousand rounds um, before it, it uh, fell out of spec. Melanite lasted 14, and this other technology, Blaze, lasted 24,000 rounds in that test. So wow. um, 
there are new technologies coming out and that's part of what we do is, is keep abreast of the, the new stuff going and, and uh, when is it going to be ready and who can afford it and how do we productionize it and things like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what's uh, cool about, you know, that's what I look forward to with guns. You know, there's lots of things like this. Maybe some people think it doesn't matter, you know, Hey, it's just coatings, who cares? But there are benefits to this whole thing. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, hey, I'm one of those dudes who doesn't want to clean my guns all the time. I don't like to clean them either. That's a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so. you know, when you go shooting and take 10, 12, 15 guns out and you go shooting, someone's got to come back and clean that mess up. And nine times out of 10, everybody's gone when the gums come back. And here they are. It's me. Yeah. I also <laughs> don't like treating my uh, guns like little babies. <laughs> Yeah. You know, no. Oh yeah. That, yeah that's I like dropping them. <laughs> you know, Walter, yeah, that, Walter is not like he's not gonna you know, agree if with If it this. starts raining, we get undercover and the guns get wet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> throw, throw in the back of your truck, you, you right, drop right, it. Go, right. these, well, these you know, tools, if, you, so. if you got those coatings like you're talking about on what don't hurt nothing. No, right. Yeah, it's exactly. not gonna do anything to Shake it. it off and start shooting. So yeah. Yeah. And so just and just if you guys are really interested in this, um, you know, I just recently met Wynn. He's a really good guy. We are going to we're going to take some time and probably get a couple of his guns. And, and you guys make you've got kits and stuff like that, like parts kits, right, Wynn? Yes. Yeah. We sell everything from a mag catch button that's coated up oh. to the full gun. And in cool. between, there's that chassis. Um, I think you had a chassis there. You were yes. Oh, yeah. By your oh, chair, too. Oh, you just yeah. reminded me. Yeah. Um, and by that, the way, this is like this is my favorite thing for manufacturers to do. For anyone out oh, there who's listening, question. manufacturers, um, just thought of something. Go ahead, Walter. What's up? Um, What's your question? Direct impingement guns. What's one of the weak points? And it's right there by your head, Hank. The gas tube. Oh, the gas right. tube. Yeah. How yeah. does how does that? This gas does, tube. What's the best coating to keep that gas tube from melting? Oh, we, well, there's 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 two things. That's a great question. We melanite, so that's that's a nitriding of the gas tube. Oh, so this is a, okay. This is melanite. Yeah, so that's a stainless, stainless steel gas tube that's been melanited. Okay. And then uh, we call it Nitromed is our our brand. Uh, there's a material. There's a stainless steel material out there that will outlast your barrel and won't melt. And that was a huge thing on the M4 upgrade programs, is they were getting in firefights over there yeah, and the gas. Your point is well taken, um, Walter. That the gas tube just melted, and uh, then you got a hammer. You got a club, then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's yeah. there's a couple things you can do there, but the the nitriding helps that, and it also helps the wear on the nipple as it's going in and out of the uh, um, gas yeah. key. Right, right, okay. right, right, right. So That's we another. sell we sell those. We sell barrels. We sell all the parts to build up an AR, or we sell this chassis, uh, which you can put furniture on. So yeah. So now I, I think this is a great idea for companies to do. I mean, because we're going to change a lot of stuff. We're going to put our own hand guards on here. We're going to want to put our own stock and, uh, you know, uh, pistol grip. And there's so many things we're going to want to do. And this, I think, is, uh, you know, to me, a good idea for a lot of guys to do. What does this cost? What's your uh, oh, you thing got on me. this? Do you know? That was, I was going to ask the same thing. So Yeah. The, wow. the chassis is... Um, a thousand dollars retail, the right. AR-15 is. So you're, you've got four hundred and fifty dollars knocked off the gun price, so that you go get whatever furniture you want. You can build a two thousand dollar gun or a twelve hundred dollar gun. Right. So they, you know, I think it's a good idea for people to do now. The, so this one's two two three. Do you do it in three oh eight? Yes, we've got a big beast chassis as well. Oh, okay. And that one is. Um, 1500 versus 2300 oh, okay. so you really get that there's an 800 dollar difference on that oh cool and then you when know. you do because you said the 6.5 creedmoor is not out yet right um it's it, i just finished that test and now we're packaging and, and getting it out the distributor show is in october and we'll release it there okay so with the 6.5 creedmoor will you also do that in a um in a bones or what you call chassis version yeah, it's going to be a strange lubricious 65 Creedmoor. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And I can't complain about that. <laughs> strange lubricious. <laughs> lubricious. Lubricious strange. Strange. That's, that's even better. <laughs> Lola, 
the next baby is going to be nutritious. <laughs> <laughs> it has been settled. <laughs> Let's I get thought, to work, woman. Not I, right now. Not right now. After the I, show. I, I, I was one, like I said, I think I call a boy Chrome Vandium. Just to, <laughs> yeah. So okay, let's um. You know what? Let's see some gun. Walter, I know you brought in some guns. Let's do. Let's oh. do some gun porn stuff here. Let's uh. You know. This is this is old school gun porn. This is PPSH forty one. That's a beautiful gun, man. Okay. Yeah, these are a ton of fun to so shoot. Much. I can't imagine how fast this thing go if it was lubed up, coated right, and they go fast anyways. So yeah. Have you ever shot one of these, Win? No, I never have. Look okay. At that. Awesome. I invite you to the hacienda sometime when Walter's coming. Let's do it. You know, yeah, to do this, or we can, um, you know, we can maybe put together some kind of event. I don't know. People are always asking me to put together an yeah, event. Yeah, and you can, and, you know, you got old school and new yeah, school, and right. And we can, right. have, we can. This have, only be real fast. The PSA AR10. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Hey, why are you doing that to the PS? What's wrong I'll with you? Coat, I'll coat that for you, Walter. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> So okay, well, you might have said this already. So so I hand you off my my rifle here. Um, um, what do you charge somebody if it's assembled versus unassembled? It doesn't matter. It's all a. It all, doesn't doesn't really matter. Because uh, you got to strip it and do all that stuff too. Right. So, yeah. We got to take it, break it down to its lowest uh, right. part. The common denominator. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. I I think the whole gun was about two fifty, like a bolt action with a barreled receiver and trigger group and all that's about. Um, I think that's 300 bucks. I mean, it's pretty reasonable. Oh, yes. I think that's very reasonable price wise. I mean, if you think about it, for the returns of what you're getting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something like an AK. Okay. I see the colors are like silver. Is there anything that's like black? If you want to, if somebody likes black and they want to. Yeah. We we can uh, nitride it. Nitride is the black. That's, yeah. Yeah. We, we, but you uh, do like, like you mentioned, you do stuff for Century Arms. So, like the. uh, Right. The um, Sentry's AKs are nitrided now. Everything yeah. Do you have a space gray version of black? Like I'm talking stealth black, like you know, like, um, like a like the stealth okay. bombers, like from the uh, what a is mel- that? A matte black. Yeah. yeah. We do have we do have a it's it's a gunmetal uh, gray kind of black. Yeah. yeah it's that would nice. be pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. You probably you probably don't have anything around with that, but I, w- I would love to see that. But you know, if Walter sends you this AK, this AK must be gold. And maybe gold with stripes. Oh, so this is going to be like uh, Ude Kuse? <laughs> yes. Yes, it has to be. That will be the most badass IO ever. I, I'm going to – the back of the receiver has a trunnion for a collapsible stock, for a folding stock. So I'm going to see if I can put the folding oh, yeah. stock on it. Yeah. And it might, get an, it might get an extra hole drilled in the side too, so – yeah you know, we'll see how it goes so yeah i mean because that would that that thing it is a beast man that is a flamethrower oh, this thing is this oh, thing yeah. is wicked yeah. bad yeah yeah that's fireballs yeah <laughs> fireballs come out of that so you know if walter sends it to you i don't care what he requests because walter always wants to go like all conservative make it look like it used to look originally or whatever send it back to him gold gold or <laughs> The gold stripes, <laughs> okay. The desert eagle. Look. I'll do a rose gold. I'm sure it'll look oh, like that. Oh, oh, rose gold. Oh, wait a second. If you, no, that is really that is a, that is a bad a rose, idea. Rose right gold? There. I yeah. do have a rose gold. I have a rose gold AK in the armory. Oh, the is part. There any, oh, it's, 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 it's like part. any way we can, can we see that? It, it's yeah. No, it's locked me, up. It's locked up. I, okay, it yeah, take me know, about a minute to get out. But no, that's okay. worth it. We will yeah. talk. I want to see this color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty badass, Walter. Yeah, rose I mean, gold. All I'm seeing is American ch- American gun chick will be jonesing for that thing. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We might get we might get we might get Brickell to come back and, and yeah. hang out with us. <laughs> she will yeah. to do with that thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, that would be beautiful. <laughs> that's pretty, yeah. isn't okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, hey. That, gold. that actually, yeah. I never That's had a, a gold gun. You need one, man. What's the matter with you? You're an AK dude. No AK <laughs> dude should be <laughs> without, without a gold AK. Yeah, exactly. I don't even yeah. have a gold trigger on a gun of mine, much less a oh, whole gold gun. It needs to be all gold, baby. Yeah. You seen the people that get on Desert Eagles and they're all shiny gold and everything? I'm like, oh, yeah. God. You don't like those desert eagles? I like the I like the uh, tiger pattern on the desert eagle. Yeah, that's, that's cool. pretty that's badass. Cool. Okay, here when is back? That was quick. Oh man, look at that! Debuted on Hank Strange. Oh boy. Ooh. 
This is and that's an AK too. Oh, oh is this something? Oh, I, I you, you're probably doing this for. It's probably hard to see the color. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, you see I mean, the yeah. Gold? yeah, you don't. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have any extra lights in there, but. Um, yeah, it's kind of a, a reddish tint. Yeah, to go it. ahead and hold that up. We can see it. Yeah, I can. I can got, see it. Yeah, right color. there in the light. Yeah, if, as you turn it, I could see it. And then. So you're doing this for someone? Um, yeah, it's one of the, it's part of an R and D program to see if we can come up with something new for the. Oh. Will we see this at a shot show at a, a certain company's booth? <laughs> <laughs> it may be ours. <laughs> it may be oh. ours. <laughs> oh, at your booth? Oh, no, awesome. well, okay. I thought you might have been doing Are you going to be a shot show next year? I will. Uh, absolutely. Okay, uh, cool. We got to have a party at your booth and at Safety Harbor's booth. So. I got a booth, too. Yeah, so. Yeah. Perfect. Walter. Perfect. Maybe yeah. there will be some gold in my future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got to we've got to work out stuff with you guys. I always try to do that with companies, guys that I know. I think gun companies need to uh, cross promote. Well, I've been and, doing like like I was doing stuff with um, Duracoat. You know, I, they did one of mine, and I did one of theirs on the table and stuff like that. You know, so absolutely, yeah. That's a great, yeah. great way to do it. Michael Smith wants to know how much to gold coat my high point, which I do have a high point. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, speak of the devil, where is it? Rose gold high point. Oh my God, that was, uh, where is it? That's where so it? crazy. Oh boy, yeah. Walter also has a high point. I now, know. <laughs> now, now, now he's rethinking. He won't do anything for me now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're no, I'll, I'll tell you that one of the other things that's very—I mean, it's not for the faint-hearted. Um, the, the pre-surface prep when you're talking about the golds, the titanium nitrides, the PVDs is, I mean, you've got to polish it down and you've got to make oh, to get it gold, the surface to get it. The shiny. Otherwise, it'll look mustard. I mean, if you want it to look shiny and a little blingy and a nice, real beautiful it's gold color, polish job. or you get mustard. And I've yeah. been disappointed with mustard a couple of times. And, oh, you know, okay. that's not a not a fun thing. But um so it, it's much more expensive to do one of the blingy guns than it is, you know, one of the industrial processes to make okay. them look good. So, so is there anything that's an OD green color besides uh, Cerakote? I mean, uh, no, that's 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 about all I've found on the. Well, there's anodize. You can yeah. anodize to green or or. Uh, but that you mentioned on the red one, it was type two. It wasn't type three, right? Right. Yeah. It's yeah. all it's all. Yeah. Type two. Revan, Revan Ulfer says rose gold with pearl grips. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. That's just that's, that's pimping right there, man. That's like high class pimping. That's like, you know, Bishop Don Juan pimping. I am guys, I am in South Florida. Yeah. I don't know how oh, much yeah. I don't know how much you guys know about pimpery. <laughs> but that's real. That's you know, real high post pimping right there. That's that's the first place I saw a, a gold desert eagle. I did a gun show down in Miami. They like that stuff down there. I don't know what it was. Oh you know? yeah. You know, I guess it was. It, it might have been drug I've, seen, I've seen some nice ones, man. I've seen some yeah. nice stuff. You it just ain't my yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. You know, I I can come up with some stuff for that. But yes, you can't make everything rose gold. <laughs> no. But we did. I know that uh, when and I were thinking about doing the OD green, it's, uh, you know, I, I think right now there's not a lot of options for that. Right, Wayne? Uh, right. Uh, we can Cerakote it and distress it or we could do a, um, a camp, you know, the appliques and the two or three tone camo. Um, I'm, those thinking, are I'm, options, thinking, uh, I'm thinking a Sten gun with the uh, melanite stuff. Not melanite, but the the. Lubricious coating, yes. Yes. Nickel yeah. boron, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, boron, it, it, yeah. it would be great. So, like, if we, if if you did that with a Sten gun, you can run it, you know, technically never, dry, I'd never, right? I'd never, I'd never clean it then. Okay. Corrosive ammo or whatever, I'd just shoot it. Yeah. yeah. That'll be the that, test. That'll be it. That'll be a nice uh, thing to do. What do you think, Wynn? We maybe do. We do recommend that you clean your weapons. <laughs> I'm not going to okay. get on that trap. Okay, okay, it'll, be, it'll be easy to clean. <laughs> I'll get the brake the break cleaner then. The brake cleaner. Yeah, yeah, just dip it. Now, dip it. Uh, you can, does, does, um, does like running it under a hose constitute cleaning? <laughs> uh, no, but uh, in a lot of cases, rags do it. Yeah, just I mean, wipe yeah. it off. Just wipe yeah. it off. Yeah. It, yeah. It, especially if you can catch it right after your range session. You know, if you let it sit, the fouling is going to get hard, and you take the back of your knife and you can chip chip it off. The 
the coating is harder than the steel it's applied on and it's right. harder than your knife metal yeah. you know, right. knife yeah. steel so you're not going to hurt oh. the, the coating um, um yeah and if you and and when you clean it remember to use ran clp <laughs> there you go <laughs> now, let me ask let me ask you a That's question you stuff. can you can just nod your head or no, yes or no uh-oh let me lock it on him <laughs> shiloh <laughs> rifle shiloh shiloh they're making ar stuff did you do the coatings for them um no okay no remember remember your knife your knife hank at the shot show when he used your knife blade and dulled it on his uh finish oh okay yeah that's the diamond hardened that's from um sharps sharp sorry 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 not yeah sharps, sharps yeah sharps. oh we do yeah yeah no. i think what you work sharps, with sharps just moved to uh stewart Florida. Florida. yeah 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 they're, yeah. Good, they're a good partner of ours yeah Okay, yeah, okay. Hard. That was the stuff then, because it's harder than the knife blade is. Yeah, Walter really liked that. Um, so, <laughs> so what? Um, I'm drawing a blank now. Is it is it John from Sharps? Jay uh, Johnson and uh, yeah. Eric. Yeah. Yeah. So he um he he was like, oh, can I see? Do you have a knife on you? I was like, okay. I always want to show off my knife. I gave it to him, and then he just oh, no. totally messed He's it up on that BCG. I was like, "What the hell are you doing?" And he was just <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I actually have one of those. It's pretty good. Yeah, they, they do good. They do good work. And so, uh, are they all set up fun. in Stewart now? Um, almost. They they had a power outage a little longer oh, yeah, than we yeah. did uh, oh, after yeah. the hurricane. That uh, I think a tree went down right behind their building or something that. Uh, turned them off for a bit, uh, but they're almost settled in here and uh, doing well. Yeah, cool. They're they're good guys. Cool. Yeah, um, Tango Hunter has to say lubriciousness again. Yeah, um, Brian says that hardness might be good for abrasion, but not for impact. For example, I drop my I drop my Nibix bolt carrier and the coating cracks off. Is that mm -hmm. true? Um, it can if it's if it's misapplied if it's not applied correctly. Um, I can. I can show you another picture where um, it's got a very tenacious bond. So there's two things that we do here. So you'll see, you'll see that's a bent panel that used to be straight. Okay. And then we coat it, and you bend it 180 degrees around a mandrel, and no coating comes spalling off. Okay. The other picture is you see that that impact that like uh, what he was just talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a panel, and we peened it with a bar from about 10 feet above, so it impacted it. And this is a cross-section of that, so you can see right here the the uh, metal moved, and the coating is all attached. It's still in place. But because those those columns are like your fingers, they just spread out. Oh, okay. Like a comb. So they're not interstitially bound together, so they won't if they won't crack like that so impact if it's now uh, i if have to caveat crack? if i can say one thing here not all nickel borons are alike you've got a lot of mom and pop shops trying to do it you've got companies that are calling electrolysis nickel boron nitride nickel boron and so you have to be careful about whose nickel boron you get and make sure it's well applied and you won't have any impact problems like that and could that be an issue as with the substrate you know the stuff um, under it, it can be, uh, and it can also be. Yeah, you didn't clean it properly before you started plating, and so you've got you've got housekeeping housekeeping issues there, and process issues. Process okay. Control so what issues. kind of um you know on that subject, what kind of uh, like warranty or whatever do you guys have with the, with uh, what you uh, offer? My lifetime warranty on the coating. Okay. If you ever shoot it off of your AR-15 or M4, I'll replace it. Okay, awesome. Absolutely. There you go. I mean, you just heard it from the man himself. From the man, yeah. Yeah, from the mouth of the lion. <laughs> Lawrence Lerwick says the Sharps 2545 is nice, but rounds are expensive. Yeah, that's... Um, he needs more companies making it to reduce costs. I think that, because it's a nice round. Walter and I were testing yeah. it. But, yeah. the, uh, but the bolt that we're talking about, you can put on your own build. So right. exactly. we are going to do some stuff. Um, I've got to get know. them. I yeah, guess. Sharps has had some good things going on there, and we actually like their round. Lots of us do. So the Tyvan Show sent me this win, and he wants to know, like, what would it cost him to make that gold? I guess this is, like, naked. It has the, no finish on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, he wants to be able to, gold. To, to go gold. Ooh. 
Um, that, and he wants to know, like, is that, you know, is that an expensive? Because I know you're saying it takes time, right? The polishing and stuff. Well, yeah. the polishing and also the process on aluminum, uh, the, the titanium nitride process on aluminum is very, very tricky. So that's why you see more AKs and more uh, flash hiders and Glocks that are, are gold. Right. Okay. Okay, so cool. We wouldn't do that on, on aluminum um, right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now, um, do you have, cause I know we've been doing this for like two hours. Do you, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to totally wear you out. We'll definitely have for everyone out there that has a ton more questions for Win, which I'm sure you do. Win will come, Win, if you want to, you can come back. I don't know if you're going to want to. <laughs> of course. I, I'm happy to <laughs> play anytime. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, do you have any more gun stuff to show us before we go? Um, I, we saw that you didn't show us the, um, the nine millimeter too long. No, so not is that long. out yet or that's um, coming out? It's coming out. What, you know, I, I can release it, but, um, you know, as you and I spoke, the, uh, I wasn't happy with the bolt lock back mechanisms that are out okay. there and I'm in the throes of designing. You are. Uh, okay. Ours. And, um, so th this is, this is a version. The next version will have the the bolt lock back on the last yeah. round. I, I would say don't rush that, man. I mean, you know, the sooner the better it comes out. But I know people do want that, and I would definitely – I've been looking for, like, the people who would get that right. So if you have some good ideas, I would love to uh, try it out. Yeah, yep. You know, um, so, that, that's, so that's, like, uh, just something that you're uh, working on right now, not really strong. Yeah, and then this is our lightweight handguard. It's a little – we also use Seekins lightweight, the Knox handguards, mm. but this one – uh, is is a couple ounces less, just just a hair less than the Seekins, and we we offer that's a new product. We offer it. Um, oh, the handguard. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, you asked about colors, and so yeah. two new things on the bolt carrier. The the Smith and Wesson red bolt oh, carrier group is selling red. like hotcakes. Oh, that's sexy. <laughs> so that's nickel boron underneath, and so it'll wear off on the rails, but it'll it'll leave the color. Uh, in the window spot and yeah. everywhere you don't scrape it off. And it's just Cerakote over the top. Okay, okay. Cerakote wears off. Right, you know? right. But uh, it's pretty tenacious. Um, we've got a pretty good bond where you're not, you don't have the wear surfaces. But it exposes the nickel boron, which is what you want anyway, on the wear right. surfaces. Right. And then this is our NIBX black. You know, for years people ask me, I love your stuff, but can you make nickel boron black? Yeah, that's what I was kind of asking about at AK, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so that's... That's our nickel boron black. Um, Very nice. Uh, Lawrence Lerwick says to ask you if you can do a Strangeaholics Liberty Green AR. Liberty. Call it the Hank Strange special. That's I do. I have the that's zombie cool. green. Check that out. That's, that's cool. <laughs> Bring the zombies back. No, I like the, uh, so, um, you know what? I don't think I've ever seen the different color. Um, but it, that's Cerakote, though, right? Yes, that's just Cerakote over the top of the nickel so boron. So there's some level of wearing, but you still have nickel boron under it. Which you'll never wear through. So that's the yes. beauty. I mean, if you put Cerakote on steel, you're going to get corrosion issues, you know, once you start wearing it. Yeah. As long as you keep it in a trophy case, it's all fine. You know, right, 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 right. But yeah. uh, once you throw it in the back of the truck, you got, you're going to have some issues. Right. To, so, get the, yeah. to get the Cerakote to adhere to the nickel boron, do you have to have a rougher finish on the... Nickel boron? You, you prep it a bit, a, a little uh, blast. A little blast, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little blast will get it, get you there. Okay. okay, very cool, very cool. Uh, you know what, let's let's wrap this up because um, I know everyone, you know, uh, Wynn's been staying. He stayed after hours to do this, but I think it's been fun. I think people really appreciate it, man. We're getting lots of very positive comments, When Folks want to thank you for Great. coming on. You've brought, like, you've brought a whole bunch of information to mind. People are dreaming of ideas all night. <laughs> well, yeah. one thing we like to do too, Hank and, uh, and Walter is that, you know, we're, we're here for information and to exchange information with the whole industry. And if it's not a coding we offer, I'll, I'll get the information. And I'll, if it's not, if one of my coatings doesn't work for the part, then I'm not going to put the coating on there. We're going to refer you to people with the right coating for your application. And so, you know, back to what Walter said and you said about cross fertilization of ideas right, and technologies right. in the industry, uh, we should use each other that way. Right. Absolutely. Right. I agree with you, man. I think that's what we should do. You know, we should try to like, really help advance this, you know. And, I learned something tonight. So, hey. Oh, I've, yeah, I've learned a lot of stuff. Um, you know, joke, 
Go I'm gonna Google. I'm gonna Google Lubricious tomorrow and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> that's gonna be the title. We need to Lola change the title to Lubricious. Trademark uh, office. Trademark yeah, office. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Joe Carpenter says this has been a win-win situation. Oh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Yeah, man. So I, I gotta thank you for coming on. Um, so Walter, any things you want to remind the folks out there? Oh. What are you up to? What are you going? What's going on? Oh man! Anybody want an AK pistol? I mean, an AR. Want anybody want a fifty BMG pistol? Uh, I do. I I'll want just, a fifty BMG pistol. I'll just throw that out there. Yes, I want one. Okay. So basic. So you. So you know, we we can get your fifty BMG, and then we could put, or it's gonna have like uh, what you call it on it, a um, uh, well, a, a sig brace. Yeah, or something like that. A, a, or, or, a, a, not a, not a sig brace, but a brace. Yes. Oh, it's gonna have a brace. Yeah. So okay. it'll be it'll be, you know, maybe a thirteen inch barrel, twelve inch barrel, and. Oh, okay. So you could put your own brace, like you could do the tail hook. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll sell the upper if you want to build your own. If you want to finish it, we'll do a whole pistol. But That's good. That would be badass. My single shot lower. I but, like um, I like stuff like that, man. Yeah, you, that, would... Well, we shot the we shot the the small one, and it wasn't bad to shoot. You know, you yeah. Yeah, I not, think it would be awesome. I would put a laser on there, man, and well, I would shoot gonna, that bad boy from the hip. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, put, I'll laser the living daylights out of something. <laughs> I'm a laser that. Yeah. Truck engine or yeah, whatever. Let yeah. Walter know. Go check out like Safety Harbor. You know he's on uh, Instagram and yeah, he's on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, he's yeah, all yeah. over the place. Let him know what you think about a pistol version yeah. of his uh, SHTF 50. Right, because that's gonna happen here pretty version. soon. Like so. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's not. And, he's, and he's calling it the Hank Junior. The little Hank. Yeah, the little <laughs> Hank. The little, little Hank. <laughs> that lubricious little beast. Yeah. With a Hank strap for his waist. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> you know, is it going to come with the laser, or do we have to buy our own lasers? <laughs> uh, you, I don't know. You probably have to buy your own, but the, yeah. the place to mount it will be there. Yeah. Okay. But what? Okay. What laser is going to be rated for fifty well, BMG? <laughs> <laughs> that's the question. Laser manufacturers, submit your samples yeah. now. If anyone knows of a laser that's rated for fifty, <laughs> <laughs> they can be right up by the by the blast zone. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm all for this. I can see me right now in the videos. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So it's it's coming. We're working on it. Yeah. Okay, you guys are working on it. Very cool. Yep. 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 Very cool. Yep. So when uh, you, what do you want to tell folks out there? How should they get in touch with you? Um, what things do you guys have going on? Yeah, um, we, we're either at Facebook or just hit our website up, and it's got our phone number. We're here all the time and answering questions, and uh, there's a form on the website. Uh, we just opened up the upgrade, so go to the personal coding uh, form, and you can fill out the form and send it in with your gun, and we'll get it back to you with whatever well, coding you want on it. One quick question before we go. Doable. Somebody wants to do like an AK, right? Yeah. Um, it, the receiver and all that barrel can be all in the gun, right? You just basically – strip it degrease it and you and say if you want to do nitriding or melanite yeah right the yeah, whole we, thing goes in the tank and no we we break it down it, oh. it's a barreled receiver so we'll get it down to a barreled receiver and then the other parts the the carrier piston group right 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 but and, i mean the, yeah. it's cool to have the receiver and all and the turn, barrel together all right. mounted up yeah okay, okay. right okay yeah cool That's all right awesome i want to um i want to thank everyone out there for watching this we've got lots of people in the chat lots of uh people watching the show and all that kind of stuff lots of good comments and questions i really appreciate that uh, i want to thank walter for coming in you know walter, thanks walter. as always yeah he's a good dude i won't know. be around tomorrow night by the way oh you won't be here tomorrow okay speaking of tomorrow we're going late walter's not going to be here i was going to be going late because i have to make a trip to tallahassee Oh, come well, back. So I might be I may be back yeah. a little bit later. I got somebody yeah. stopping by the shop. So I okay, yeah, I'm gonna be starting at eight. So if you can make it at eight, that'll be good. I don't have anything else. I'll probably planned, be back. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Walter will be here tomorrow. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> We're gonna be going at eight. Okay. Um, you know, I I uh, definitely want to thank Win for coming by. I mean, yeah. you know, this has been awesome. Absolutely, been fun. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So glad that I met him. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do this again several times, Win. Yeah. Well, the and next time I'll have the, I'll have, well, or you can show it. Uh, we shouldn't be too far off, but from deciding on what pattern we're going to do for your giveaway gun. And then, uh, yeah. mm. you know, they'll be excited yeah. to see the final product. Yeah. People keep commenting on this video and let us know what you want to do so we can give win that. And yeah, you know, you can come on. Uh, I'm, I'll be happy to come down to Stewart and visit you guys as well. Perfect. 
you know, and do some stuff and also test things. So, um, you know, I want to thank everyone for watching. Like I said before, I also want to thank everyone that sponsors the Hank Strain situation. That would be Ran CLP. Ran CLP, good stuff. Yeah. You know, even though you have to clean your your guns less, you still want to throw some CLP <laughs> on there. Yeah. And uh, Andrew's custom leather, of course, and Safety Harbor Firearms. Got to thank Walter and the rest of the family, and of course. These dudes right here, Big Daddy Guns. Big Daddy. That's how we get this space over here. We can make all this trouble. Talk about lubriciousness. <laughs> all right. This is, yeah, this is the lubricious episode. So thanks to everyone for joining us. And, absolutely, absolutely. And of course, I want to thank once again the people that support us on Patreon. It is much needed. That's how we can afford to bring you all these crazy guns and shows like this and all that stuff. So thank you for your support, especially uh, Real Cujo. He does support us on Patreon, and he also donated 50 bucks to the show tonight. That was very, very nice. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, coming from a guy who is a veteran, and, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate everything that he does, and he's been helping us out for years, years. Very good guy. So that's it. Peace out, guys. See you tomorrow. Peace. Bye-bye. See ya.